Sliding right in in time. Oh. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> perfect sound. As Maddie, Kyle, can you scoot in a little? I can. I can move the camera a little bit. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another fantastic Tuesday. Everybody's favorite day of the the week. I think. I mean, it's got to be favorite time of the afternoon. Definitely yeah. favorite time of the afternoon. We <laughs> spin our, our 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 dummy. Spin it. Yeah, spin them a little bit. So we. Yeah. There we go. Bam. We got to show off the branding. We got a new spick the and merch. span shirt. It's actually. This isn't even a merch. This is giveaways. Oh wow! We don't like to sell anything. We don't actually like to. We don't like to be in the green yeah. on the show. Who likes <laughs> revenue streams. <laughs> um, guys are rich. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Matrix Gear, helping to keep the lights on. Hell yeah! Is that and, literally what it says? Yeah, on that's that? what it says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's so, great. Yeah. So we appreciate uh, Gen X, uh, Matrix Gear, and uh, and all of you, of course, everybody here. You know what I mean? Uh, without you, uh, I don't know what we would be doing on a Tuesday. Probably, probably nothing productive. Lunch. Yeah, it'd be Late like lunch. lunch. It would be lunch. I'd be at, I'd be at dance class, or gymnastics class with my daughter right now. But swimming lessons. I did. I do swimming lessons every day now. We do. I don't. Oh, that's the Sloan new thing. Does. Yeah, you do them every single day for. Yeah. It's like two or three weeks in a Dude, row. Dude, get this. This you're never gonna believe. This is insane. So Camille's like, hey, I signed. We got this. It's like in someone's backyard in Tierra Santa. She goes, I, uh, I've got, uh, I got book, book Sloan for swim class. I'm like, okay, great. You know, like, well, how much is it? She's like, 45 bucks. I go, what, like a session? She's like, no, they say it's $45 a week. And I go, well, how, how many sessions do we get? She goes, four days a week for an hour a day. And I go, there's miscommunication on the message. There's no no possible way that, that there's nothing costs that much. Yeah, is this in Laos? Like, yeah. what are we talking about, though? <laughs> Santa. So, I mean, not as far as where you live, but pretty <laughs> close pretty to much. pretty close to Laos, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, anyway, it's $45 a week for four one-hour sessions with uh, uh, Mr. Ted. Wow. And Mr. Ted's been teaching in the exact same pool for 30 years. So, I'm, my guess is they haven't changed their prices in 30 years. Maybe he's independently wealthy, too. And he, he doesn't, doesn't know. Like it's, he, it's, he's, he's teaching in someone else's pool. Like, this lady charges everybody. So, I don't know exactly... Uh, they might, they actually run a very similar operation apparently than the Spick and Span show, mm -hmm. although um, theirs is substantially more educational. Mm -hmm. Um, but they don't think they're in the green. We didn't fill out any liability waivers either, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, this show maybe it's like a lost leader for him. Maybe he has another business, maybe he does real estate. So while he's teaching kids, you know, to swim, he's like, Oh, by the way, uh, are you in the market for uh, buying or selling a house? Because, uh, you know, who knows? Just like, yeah, he hasn't asked me that yet. You know. And he's got back to back to back to back lessons. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, he's great. He's she's she's no floaty. She's under the water. She's doing it all. It's it's pretty cool. And uh, the lady I was talking to her because I was like, oh, I wanted a friend to sign up with us. And she goes, uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, but he he found another private lesson. She goes, oh, really? Yeah. Hey, do you know how much he's char? She's he's paying. You know, she's trying to, she's trying to test the temperature to see if her prices are competitive or not. And I go, I actually don't know. I'll ask him. But my guess is it's it's 
your prices are pretty competitive. I would say. I would well, say. I need this dude's number because uh, little Monty definitely needs to get into some swim lessons. And uh, the other go every day situation mm -hmm. was like a shit ton of money. So yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's four kids. Up four. four kids max. Wow, four crazy. kids maximum. No floaties allowed either, which is great. <clears throat> so, so, so shout drown, out to Mr. Ted. I appreciate drown, you. Drown, no floaties allowed. He's Mr. Ted's on it, oh, dude. Okay, He's okay. he doesn't mess around. He takes he takes no BS. Like that. You try to you try to Put like those kids into shape, dude. It is like, you know, the first thing is like I'm dunking his shoulders. Don't kick me. You better stop kicking me, kid. Stop <laughs> kicking me. Let go. Let go of my hand. Let go of my hand. That's if great. you don't let go, I'm gonna drop you. And then so they're he's like, like well, the David I'm... Goggins of water, dude. He's yeah. He's... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's yeah. He's 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 fantastic. He's fantastic. So um. Yeah, anyway, we've got uh, we've got a little Q&A thing going on, uh, as you know. Thank you, Maddie, for coming in. You know what I mean? Glad to be um, here. Glad to be here. It's always yeah. a pleasure. Flying yeah. in from, uh, or driving all the way in Flying from Santee. In. Flying in. <laughs> so far, dude. Flying so far. Flying in. Flying in. Uh, and then uh, we got Dan Napoli. We're going to call here in about five minutes or so. And so I'm excited to have him on. And uh, the topic of the week, continuing on into like the next week or so, uh, is kind of more or less like paintball on TV. And you, as the storyteller of our generation... Um, I definitely want to get uh, get your insights and, and talk a lot about that. Well, and, I did work on pretty much all of those. And things. the fact that you, yes, exactly, you've, you've been involved in every single one of them. And actually, uh, on one of the later shows, I want to get Eric Crandall on because he also had a hand in some of the uh, the previous productions. He knew he has a, like a lot of the, the back end info on why and how some of the ESPN shows worked out. The Mohegan Sun one, mm -hmm. which you were also in. Did yeah. you do anything with the NPPL one? I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, which I think is one of the better ones. That one looked cool. Uh, looked which, well, which one? The NPPL in Miami. Like the one that was on ESPN, uh, the Ocho? The two, ESPN 2 in Miami. Was it the Ocho? No, yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, there is an Ocho. That's an actual there, thing. There, yeah, there wasn't, though, yeah. when that first came out. That's why it's so funny. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I actually, well, we, uh, so our, and with Excessive at the time, that's why I was playing with uh, uh, Excessive Energy, because we won Miami. Mm -hmm. So I have both hosted that event as the play-by-play -play guy and then also won it uh in the semi-pro division so we had two pro teams and then next year we took uh first and third because um you guys well we almost had two uh mm -hmm. we also went in because we almost beat you guys but then you guys beat us with excessive energy and so it was dynasty and excessive so it was excessive or dynasty and then excessive energy but anyway yeah so i had i did work on that one um that was just a weird gig for me because you know, that was all done in post-production, and so I had to uh, essentially gear down and then go out in front of the whole stands and shoot <laughs> all of the opens in the sweltering Miami Heat and then go back and gear up and then go play in the darkness, essentially, to go win the tournament. So that was a very interesting day. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny, um, for sure. That was, that was a long one. That Miami one was a long yeah. event, man. That was like... Cause they did the thing where they changed the field at the end of each day, and then there was like all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. On that one. Uh, before we get to too much more of that, um, uh, really quickly, did a clinic at SC Village. SC Village is back. Yeah, how's it look? It dude. Look, the pictures look amazing. Beautiful. Uh, the turf is like... Dude, they were out there That's with nice. this, this like little turf uh, scooper thing. A machine. It's a machine. It's, it looks it's like a... a it's like a Zamboni. Zamboni. It, it's like a... Um, it's not champ... No, no, no. Paint it's a... Zamboni. Let's do this. So it's like it goes... Spins... Okay. It's like a broom. It's like a weed whacker, but broom. It it's a broom and a paintballs. It sweeps the paintballs, but yeah. fluffs up the turf. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's what I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, and so it's um, dude, the the field was sick. Yeah. Shout out to Money Mike. Uh, I see uh, Mr. Valence, Mr. Orlando in here. Uh, lots of guys that are 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 here supporting the show, the Champs Club, and just paintball in general were out there. Uh, rocking, dude, it was sick. It was it was yeah. like really no, good. And okay. then they have a modular hyperball field. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I had lunch with Todd not too long ago before the last event, and he was uh, kind of breaking down what it was going to look like, and he was super stoked on it because, you know, obviously he's been working with the Jujitos and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. SC Village to try to help run the tournament side of things over there. And, you know, you, every place w without uh, an amazing facility, it's really, really difficult to breed paintball players in that area. And there's lots of fields. In, we have mm -hmm. a decent amount of fields in Southern California. Uh but to have like a badass place you can go, especially now with the closure of Pendleton, yeah, which is you know R.I.P. Camp Pendleton. But it's cool to see SC Village uh, revamp that because you know a little nostalgic for me because that's where we used to drive up and practice all the time and sure. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's very cool to hear mm-hmm. and cool to see you. Stoked to get up there at some point yeah. in time. That Decay of Nations. I know. I was gonna say probably next time we'll be going up there is to play in Decay of Nations. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, shit is tight. I actually I've only played in one of those one day. I know Kyle's not coming to that big game, <laughs> but uh, you're not a big gamer. He's no. not. He's not. You would love big games. Nah. Why not? There's literally like nothing shoot, on the line. You don't like shooting 150 Thousands people in an hour? I do for like an hour, but that, those things I feel like in my mind, it's like five days long. It's not five days long. Yeah. It's I like just five go, hours long. I, yeah, I just Maybe. want to go for like an hour. You could do that. Yeah, you can do that. Done. You could do that. You kind of don't want to, you want to go up, you want to be playing for longer than it took you to drive up there. So you're going to need to. You need to at least a minimum of three oh, hours. It's close. Yeah, so you need at least it's at three SC hours. Village. Yeah. Okay. Still on the SC Village topic. So, dude, K Nations is sweet. I so, really. I didn't think there was any. I thought all the big games were like far away in the woods somewhere. Uh, know, well, SC Village does have some sort of wood, wooded kind of greenery, there's shrubbery. A, there's in the a background. bunch of woods yeah, there. Yeah, sick, I mean that's like. Sick. Well, it's also. Have you ever been to SC Village? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's cool too because so the wood side of SC Village. So we're talking about the revamp of the tournament side, which is great. But you know, SC Village is arguably. It's one of the most historic paintball parks in the entire world. Um, and they've had kind of the same woods ball area slash, you know, they have like some castle stuff and, you know, just it's been built up over the past 35 years, 40 years to kind of be what it is. Um, but that's what's fun about it is it's such a big battleground. And when you go out with a big game, you get, you know, a couple hundred on a couple hundred. Decay Nations will, I don't know, maybe be like 300 on 300 or something like that. Maybe more, maybe a little bit less. Depends on how hot it is probably. Um, but it's this roving fun battle. So we, and you can, and, and a couple, like a handful of really good paintball players, like the three of us. And if we grabbed, you know, four or five or six, maybe 10 dudes that listen to this show, divisional players and all rolled as a group, like, bro, you could just go through 50 walk-ons. No problem. Dude. Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's I'm really, really, I'm fun. really good. It's really fun walk-on. doing the, yeah. Yeah. You're really good at walk-on assassin- yeah, assassinations. Yeah. yeah I believe it. Look at this. This is the second. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. We're, we're, we're not, we're not live. Thing. We're not live. Look at this. You see the new Revy? I did. I uh-huh. Did. I got oh, smoke. I, yeah, dude, I got three of them. Dude, I'm, I'm rocking the new Revy. Dude, it just, every time, every time I put a nice auto cock in my hands, it just feels like home. Yeah. And if, if it's in true autococker fashion, I can get like three points before one of these hoses blow off or before this thing starts <laughs> short stroking. Here's my problem with autocockers, right? I like to push my this thing through the, the bushes. Then the this regulator starts turning a little bit. Next thing you know, it's decocking. And well, this I gotta... one, but this that's easy. That's an easy fix here. Yeah, Just I know, it, but not like in mid, mid-game after I've already you know sliced a ball in half. It's, what does that thing do? This thing... So this is <laughs> this called thing. this is called a rock, and this adjusts. A ro- it's a regulator. It's a, it, okay. it, it adjusts. That was like the OG term okay. for it, but it essentially adjusts the uh, the amount of pressure that the ram uses to cock this machine. And this is the ram right here. This is the ram. So and the ram the... will go back, and then this is the three way. Where's the velocity changer? The velocity. Well, there's a couple different ways to do it, but the, tr- the a couple main. Ways. The, well, the main way you do it is you pull this out mm-hmm. and then adjust the tension of the spring that's in here, and that will adjust how hard that the valve gets hit, which d- then dictates how much air comes through. Which is how you will adjust your velocity. How do you change the BPS? Just go faster, <laughs> baby. You just go faster. You just pull the trigger faster, or you put an electronic no ramping on, on this that? bitch. No, there's no ramping, okay. dog. No ramping. Though you can get this bitch you, to shoot 320 if you just hold. I yeah, you got a whole button. Your carnivore gun, though, in Greg Hastings was fast. I liked using it. Well, that was the first year that I had those guns. I should have got an award for every one that I shot because uh, the technology was not quite dialed. But the last year that I had it, I mean. It was an autococker shooting 15 balls a second. Now, the thing would, I'd have to have four of them because they would just get beat to, to bits. So I'd just come back and throw one in the bag and grab another one. And I had like a personal tech, like, give me another one, let's go. And then just go right back out. So that was tight. <laughs> <laughs> would I ever play with an automatic? <sighs> bro. Come on, get out of here. Come on, bro. I actually have a I'll funny automatic story okay, real quick. So the very, uh, so the very, very first, first play t- time you played Yoshi turned up the velocity. And no, the, that, yeah, that was a hardcore cheater gun for sure. <laughs> but no, I had a, I had an, uh, an auto mag. So I, Found paintball when I was 15 and a half and fell in love with it right away. And I took all the money I'd saved up for a car and I bought an auto mag. Uh, little did I know that that was a giant mistake. And so I'm tinkering with my auto mag at the chrono station as a teenager. And this dude rolls up that I ended up being teammates with on Navarone in like a couple months after that, maybe like five months later. And so he rolls up and I'm like having a problem with it. And he just rolls up his auto cocker and it's like, boom, 298, boom, 297, boom, 298. And he looks at me and, you know, no face mask on because, like, we, you know, the yeah, you guys are bad face mask yeah, back true. in the day. Mm-hmm. So smoking his cig. And he's like, what's up? What's up, kid? And he's like, there's something wrong with your gun? And probably everyone's going to know how this story goes. But 
He's, I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I know what's wrong. I'm like, do you know what's wrong with it? He's like, yeah, I know what's wrong with it. It's a fucking auto mag. And then just walks away. Yeah. <laughs> so ba- when, hey, when, when paintball players were true role models, <laughs> 15, 14 or 15 year old Maddie shaking at the thing, some guy smoking a cigarette playing with paintball goggles on comes over and is like, a you got a problem, kid? Yeah, it's a different, it's a different game back then. <laughs> Can we talk about too how Oliver was able to play like half the tournament with his mask up? We and kept the chin strap was on there. Yeah, there's yeah. a video of it on Instagram, and the comments are great. It up with the chin strap. It's like, over. wait, how is that legal? And they're like, shut up, like it's Oliver. Like, yeah, he's grandfathered in. He the the need best it. part about it is, I used to play with my goggles folded up, and I would always get in trouble, and he would always make fun of me for it. To put, get, yeah, no, of, of pulling my goggles well, up. There's actually some uh, history in regular. So, in, uh, like when Major League Baseball made uh, the players actually put on helmets with ear flaps if you played if you started playing your major league career if you were a veteran essentially you, you didn't you have to option. do yeah you, you got grandfather oh. clause in to that rule so you mm. didn't so then as things progress the guys like ozzy uh smith who was this ridiculous shortstop used to do like backflips and shit um he would just have like a baseball are we talking hat. about motocross or are we talking about this baseball, baseball dude you just do backflips no i mean well he would like do like a round off back handspring into a backflip as like his like cell signature celebration Six, okay okay i was i just i thought we, trans- doing, I thought like, we transitioned he's not doing like a, he's not doing like a you know yeah. turning two and yeah. doing like a backflip <laughs> yeah. in that situation but uh but yeah so you know there are grandfather clauses and there's some i think oliver could you know clause it's yeah fine. yeah he's fine with it he's fine with it um uh, all right let's uh let's call dan dan up here real quick uh see how he's uh he's going just feel how good it feels, bro. It does feel good. I, I've, I've got this thing for a couple of All right. And it's pretty light for... Oh, here we move oh, this okay. slightly. Yeah, that thanks. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I think it's to free flow does a good job. Yeah, yeah that's that's a nice one. That's perfection. a nice one. I was supposed to get one, never, never did. What, what were you going to do with it? I might have went to the woods with it <laughs> if I had one. <laughs> Dan Napoli. Uh, I think we got you. All right. Is this, this is new. No one's really used to uh, FaceTiming as a as a means of communication these days. They like, hey Ryan. Hey, how you doing, Dan? I'm good, bud. Yes. Uh, can you see us? I'm here with no, uh, I'm with Maddie. Oh, what's up, Dan? Your camera's off, Ryan. My camera's off. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, now I can see. I was uh, making fun of him for not having his camera on. What's up, gentlemen? How are you doing? Doing all right. Awesome. Dude, still Matt, good to see you. Good to see uh, you good too. Good to see all of you, gentlemen, of course. But of course. I didn't know I was going to see Matt until like twelve hours ago. So yeah, yeah, I thought it'd be. Uh, but I was trying to get Brad to come down. Brad's actually moving back to San Diego. Do you oh, know that? Cool, I did not. Yeah, know he's that. moving back like next week. Where's nice. he at right now? Uh, he's been in Utah working. Um, well, he's been working remote. I mean, he's done a lot of different things, but I think his job's pretty remote, so he can live yes. wherever he wants. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would definitely not nothing against Utah. It's very beautiful up there, but <laughs> I'm a little partial to San Diego, and he lived here for a long time. <laughs> I, I know he's missing. I know he's missing San Diego, so that's that's cool. Last last I talked to him, he didn't have his like date set yet, uh, but knew it was coming up. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's. I think it's pretty. It's pretty much happening like, like, not ASAP. Here, and, uh, and I didn't. I didn't know until I kind of randomly hit him up, and I was like, "Hey, what do you, what do you think about coming on?" He said he works. He has. Uh, he's got work at those. Uh, those like this time of the day, mm. even though it's remote, he still is like. You get you have to clock in still. Mm. Yeah, they like track like hits because he's doing. Um, he's a VFX artist for Lumen, um, and so it's like, even though they're remote, like they know when they're logged in or like all of that kind of jazz. So it's. Mm-hmm. Dude, I love that mall rats po- uh, poster in the background. I was literally oh, let's let's zoom out here a little bit. I was literally just uh, just telling was it Damien or. Or I was telling one of the guys, a Blake, Blake, about uh, the chocolate covered pretzel scene. Uh, hey, would you like to? Hey, Mister Spenning, would you like damn, a chocolate tasty. pretzel? <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> the stink bomb. Yeah, I dude, I love, I love Kevin Smith stuff, even though. And Mark was interesting because it was like, it was a huge flop in the theaters, but it's like one of like Universal's best selling DVDs of all time. Um, it was very much a like you know dorm. I mean, it's it's rated R, but it comes out at a time that it's for high school and college kids. So yeah, I love I love that flick. Yeah, it was, it, it, that's a, that's probably that's one of my favorite Kevin Smith movies. Absolutely, I, Pro- I probably my favorite. That and Jalen Jane Silent Bob's Bright Strike Back is pretty good. <laughs> His very first one's a classic. What's it, the Clerks? Yeah, or no, yeah, yeah. Clerks. Yeah, I'm not into black and white movies. You know, 
It's a conversation based movie. It kind of I know, so I, like I know, Tarantino. I know, I know. He doesn't know, like the Wes Anderson films. What, dude? It's not that I don't like Wes Anderson oh. films. I like just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm. I, I mean, get it. You can take it or leave it. Yeah, and I'm all I'll watch him and I enjoy him, you but you like know. like the atmospheric visuals that he brings to it. Listen, you know, this isn't aesthetic. a show about me and my taste. Okay. He's like a Transformer. This kind of is, though. Stop Marvel. it! This, is, this, this kind of is a show about that. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, shit. Yes. Betty, does your shirt say read an effing book? Absolutely, it does. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, I went to the uh, North Park Book Fair, and at one of the little uh, kiosks there, I saw it hanging up, and I was like, how much is that book, or how much is that, how much is that shirt? I want it immediately. Do you have an extra large? Yeah, so much. I'll just take all my money. The world would be a lot better place if people read more books. Um, right. Is there true. anything I can do? I um, I can obviously hear him. I just I don't see Kyle. Uh yeah, can, it's just well, like um uh, yeah we can. Oh, it's, your hands, buddy. Cool. Yeah, we can move, yeah, move that, move that a little bit. There we go. There we go. But like uh, Fantastic. yeah, we're just hey, um. What up? What up? We missed a little bit on space. You know, it's like um, no, I gotta get a fish eye lens. Doghouse Studios needs upgrade. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Lots of people tell us that you know they love it. But lots of people say, "What? Why do you have a camera filmed pointing at your iPad, pointing at you guys when you can just do it another way?" Uh, you know what, though, after having seen this uh, evolve over the past mm -hmm. since COVID, mm -hmm. it's it's coming along. You know, it's coming along. It's coming along. <laughs> you guys are getting there. It's getting there. You have yeah, four yeah. computers here, and you got an external microphone and multiple cameras, and yeah, you know, you know it, it goes with this nostalgic. And here's the big thing: we don't like headphones. We don't want to wear headphones. Mm -hmm. And the second you have a picture in picture that goes through the through the the broadcasting studio, mm -hmm. everybody's got to wear headphones. You got to go on cans. You got to go on cans. Is that what they're called? All right. It so is. so let's go a little bit more. Let's uh, turn change gears here. Turn turn it a little bit to more of the of the the studio talk, and uh, and and explain a little bit about what you got going on, what you're doing. A little little quick history, maybe even. I think everybody should know who you are. I hope everyone knows who Dan Napoli yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I've been gone for a minute. Yeah, um, so I am a um, documentary filmmaker, um, director, editor, writer, producer, it, roughly in those orders, and then I'm sometimes I am forced to hold a camera. Um, uh, I have my own production company called um, Eros Cinema, which is where we're housing um, the Iron Kids documentary. Um, I am directing and editing that, which is in production. Um, I've sold two films to um, streaming distribution uh, through Gravitas Ventures, uh, 50 Summers, which was a minor league baseball documentary, um, Best Kids in Texas. Uh, it's kind of the story of X Factor, uh, which I'm proud to say is the first, and I've, for now, but hopefully this changes, um, only film to get like um, mainstream streaming distribution, like authentic streaming distribution, iTunes, Amazon Prime, um, that that sort of thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, I worked with Planet Eclipse for like 11 or 12 years um, doing their video content, um, making the Artifacts um, series that Maddie narrated. You guys had been featured in a bunch um, before that, uh, I did Jawbreaker video series with uh, Brad Mon. Um, I also uh, was the director of marketing, advertising, and promotion for uh, Warp Sports, which is not around anymore, and also Team Avalanche, not around, but during the heyday of that La Soya, Rocky Cag, um, and then um, kind of oddly tied to the Iron Kids. This is in 1999, <laughs> I came into the industry. Um, and I was uh, Pat's music soup, uh, music supervisor on Push, um, which just means I learned um, how to go out and get clearance on all the badass songs that Pat wanted to use. Um, <laughs> so those, very that's his yeah, those are badass. I mean, we're still one of one of the songs just came up like randomly on my playlist on Spotify. Mm -hmm. I forgot which one it was. Uh, that's awesome. But dude, it's said like, and I think everybody who's watching here because we have we have we have a quite quite a eclectic group of of uh, fan base that watches this you know we get we'll get around three or four thousand views by the end of the week on on each show so thanks again everybody for for sharing this and watching this multiple times even if you just click on it i don't know how the metrics work exactly but uh but yeah we'll get around uh, 3500 views on average on these videos and, and i know a lot of players uh, just based on my clinic last weekend at sc village i gotta show you these goggles before I, before we get off here too um 
But, like, we had players in there that had been playing for 25-plus years. One of the guys was 60. You know, Tammy and Todd Adamson were out there. They're in 25-year-plus. Nice. So most of the people have been in the industry for a long time. Wait, Todd was taking your clinic? He was learning from me. He wasn't actually, he wasn't geared up. <laughs> I was like, he just got into the first battle of the Hall of Fame. I don't think Todd needs any of your advice. No, we had we had the fems. We had the fems out there. <laughs> we had the fems out there. And he did say he liked a lot of my drills. He was like, wow, this is a great one. We're going to use nice. this. But uh, no, I mean, what's cool is like, and, and you know this, right? Because obviously coming in with, uh, uh, working with us, or not working with us, meeting us back in 99, 2000. We had Dynasty fans in 2001 when we started. We won World Cup that year, uh, and you know, at, we had been gaining fans, fan base, uh, you know, for the last 24 years. Players that were 13 then are now adults with kids now who 100%. are also, you know, we've got like some people will show up and they'll have a 10 year old or 12 year old or a 15 year old kid, and they're both. De- like generations fans of dynasty you've probably done this already so, and I've, I've done this and i know that Todd, like a, a bunch of the dudes have been around have, pro- have done this but it's like there's a there's a you know a guy will roll up with his grown-ass son or mm-hmm. daughter mostly it's sons though and uh and, and i'm looking at this guy i'm like i'm like oh is this your son dude you got big and then and he'll show you a picture like this was you with my uh-huh. son you know back in 2005 and can we get recreate the picture and then you take another picture of it and it's kind of cool yeah there are but that's again as we kind of get into the weeds here generational fandom is incredibly important to sports so dude ryan this will i mean this will blow this blew my mind i I Mm -hmm. assume it'll blow yours i I told alex i don't know if if i had told you this in the times i saw you but probably about three months after um we announced that we were doing the Iron Kids. I got an email. I think it was an email or maybe a social media message from a guy who's like, oh, I'm the cinematographer on The Last Dance. So stoked that you're doing an Iron Kids doc. I can't wait. I'm like, fuck. Do you guys swear on this? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you just want. did. You okay. just yeah. did. You just did. I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. I mean, I guess somebody's <laughs> probably trolling me. So like, I go to his IMDB and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that's this is the guy's name. So like, yeah. I email him. And to your point, he's like, oh, dude. Uh, you know, he's a little bit younger than Maddie, and I. he's pro- probably just a scotch older than you. He's like, uh, back in the day when I, dude, when I grew up, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, like, you know, Dynasty, and then a little bit later, like, Cap Factory, Cap Avalanche, like, Cap Avalanche, everything from, like, you know, 2000 to 2002, oh, that was, like, my jam. I'm so, um, you know, I'm so stoked you guys are doing this. You know, I'm like, dude, you're DPing, like, the Michael Jordan doc, why are you writing me? <laughs> he just loves paintball that much, you know, and, and, you know, like you said, just started here at one point, but, you know, now is, is you know, a grown-ass man in, Dan, in his career. Dan, just real quick, you might want to describe to the audience what a DP is, because uh, yeah, that yeah, might yeah, need yeah. some sorry, clarification. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in film, that would make him a, thank you, Maddie. Uh, audience, uh, I knew what yeah. you were talking about. I, I know too. I know. Yeah, you know. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, this got spicy quick." What was yeah. happening? So, um, yeah, I meant that in in certain types in most of the film industry, other than a, a particular part of the film industry, a DP is your director of photography, or in Europe they call them a DOP. Um, as opposed to something different in a different part of the film. Which is an incredibly, DLP that's, a, that's it, yeah. unarguably one of the most important person people on like a production. So that's, that's a big time. And, and that's the person, because I always, I always wondered, is that the person who's controlled, like you're controlling basically what the shot looks like essentially from a, through the lens? Yeah, you're so, uh, 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 the cinematographer, the director of photography is articulating, um, I mean, if you get the fan, the like big fancy art Roger Deakins answer, I think it's you. You are the manipulator of light, but like, ooh, that's keep it there. With, that's with, nice. You are manip- yeah, that's, I am that's, the that's manipulator right. of light. It's, it's very true. Um, it's very important. But they're working with the director to articulate, like, a director's vision or what we're looking for. So, like on Iron Kids, like Sammy Anzari's our doc, and like Sammy and I sat down, and you know, kind of wrapped it out in like what we want it to look like and how many cameras and, and a feel and like what rules we kind of want to want to break. Cause we, one of our camera setups are like a rule break. And, and so, you know, they're, they're the master of that domain of going through, well, we can sh- shoot with these lenses and bring and this type of light. And, and, you know, as a director, obviously I'm able to, you know, communicate with that, but yeah, they're, they're really 
uh, articulating the the director's vision and kind of putting their visual, their control of in control of the visual um, of the film. Got it. So, what's uh, any updates before? I mean, we'll get we'll probably get Alex on here soon too, but uh, before he tries to steal the show like he always does, <laughs> we got to get Alex on, right? Yeah, yeah I know. But we, just, we, we want to get our questions. Yeah, we need to try it We need to try it before he I comes. I was gonna say, I'm gonna walk out you, right now. Yeah, if we you don't see get the Alex shirt. You see the shirt? I was just, just deceptively oh, looking okay. through the corner I did not of the shirt that little until he pops out. You know? Oh yeah, it's like it's like one of those. He's like one of those things where it's like in the background. We don't get to take turns. Yeah, Alex. Alex is really selfish. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'll stay as long as Dan's here, but if we don't get Alex. Frazier on him out of here, dude. Okay. Yeah. Look, he, he owns the most of you of, of the emojis on the on the emoji board too. He is he is he sucks it's up everything. His show. He sucks up the whole the whole <laughs> well, it's entire it's like, But it's also gets like comic relief of comic relief because you guys are right. pretty funny together mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then he comes in and is like extra funny. Oh e- okay. Right. <laughs> extra funny. He actually just that makes, was pretty funny. He just makes fun of us. Well yeah. more so Ryan, but <laughs> definitely more so Ryan, yeah. for sure. So Maddie, that's one, uh, sorry, sorry, Dan. that's one of his favorite things to do is yeah. make fun of. Can around. we get in? Can, can the can the, the people explain the like uh, just a little bit about the Iron Kids doc? What you're working on? How, if your eyes yeah. are how how bloody your eyes have gotten from looking at. Dude, uh... <laughs> um, so yes, it's. Uh, I'll start with this. Okay. Ooh. And let me. Hopefully, this does what I want it to do, but doesn't make it hang up. There we go. <laughs> Yes, Ryan. That's your transcript, bro. You are in the lead. <laughs> that is that is seventy four pages. Um, that's your interview. So he's saying you're long winded. Is what he's trying. To um, every oh. every principal we sat. In, so the 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 good thing. the okay. four the four shirt the four shirt bros. The yeah. Alex, Oliver, Ryan, and Yosh. I've got uh, a shirt. We have two of those shirts made. Actually, that is I got a really one. cool I shirt. I kind of want one of those shirts. Too. And were those interviews were about four hours long. I think Maddie's was about three and change. I am also um, just giving you some scope <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> thanks, Maddie. Very, very. Thanks, more, thanks. Way more long-winded than you are. Uh, <laughs> thanks, for the, thanks for the update. <laughs> That's what I get paid. I never guessed. I never it's took a big that scope. Time, yeah. It's a big scope <laughs> documentary. Um, <laughs> we're we're really trying to do something that kind of last dance momentum generation. Um, so I'm just plugging away. I'm almost all the way through. Um, logging and and what's called transcoding um, the archival footage. It's interesting. We started out and didn't think one of the reasons that Sammy and I came up with and, and, and bought on Sammy um, a very complex multiple camera structure is when we go into this, it's like, you know, we're talking about documenting a large part of the 90s and 1999. We don't know how much footage we're going to have. We don't expect to have hardly any. Uh, well, Brad Mon, who's going to be a producer on it, and Brad's had a treasure trove of i mean archival footage Mm -hmm. like unbelievable like eric crandall at probably 19 dude that is insane yeah that's great yeah so i'm just logging going through that stuff it's we're probably um i'm just starting to get my my toe into uh post-production really heavy you know probably by the end of the year we're gonna have something is kind of what we're we're hoping for um just to give you guys some context to um an example again some of the things we're aspiring to like momentum generation which if you're not familiar is an awesome surf documentary mm-hmm. about that movement from the 90s <laughs> um they, which ryan if you haven't seen that uh, yeah definitely. i've seen it it's, it's great I, dude they, they i mean we're not going down this route but just giving you context they worked on that for seven years Oof. yeah yeah but i mean they have they also have a lot more to work with right because they're 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 they had a lot more footage to work with Right, so I think that that process well, was like a. It was more. But it was more grandiose to like con- like trim it down. They probably have more people to work on it. Sure, you sure. Know? So good that, point, that's good the thing. Because and I, I just want to make this statement, Dan, before you go on, just because yeah, yeah, people please. need to understand. So the meticulous nature of working on something like you're working on right now cannot be overstated. It is so fucking difficult, you know, to to pull a story out of the archives like this and there's so many different facets it's what's happening now what happened in the past clarifying what happened in the past that requires multiple different sources in different medias people it's it's incredibly difficult what dan and his team are trying to achieve so dan i have to you know tip my hat respect to you and the the professionalism Mm -hmm. that you're bringing to this because it is so hard and you only get one chance to make it right because once that film is made and it's in the can it's in the can it goes out into the world and is what it is. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure 
I'm not putting extra pressure on you. I don't need to because no. we're professionals. And you know how this works. But it's like, and you know the magnitude of a story like this for for the sport of paintball. And I just I wanted to say I really do think that you've approached this with that meticulous professional nature that is needed for something of this magnitude because this is something that could get on a Netflix. We'll get into this in a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, as far as media and paintball and television, do we? I mean. Again, there's a lot of different ways to go down this road, especially in 2023. You know, we're not sitting in 2005. This isn't even, you know, 2015. Things have changed. The, the landscape from a media perspective have changed, changed drastically. But what never changes is that you have to tell a fucking good story. Yeah. That's the most important thing. And Dan, you tell a great story. And you are a professional at your job. So I just wanted to, again, I'm very long-winded. That was my long-winded way of saying, good job, bro. He wanted to reiterate the fact that he was about to solidify his comment that he made a bit ago. After you, after I flexed I mean, on everybody with seventy five pages, Matt had to come in, come in and be like, "Well, you know what? I can talk too." <laughs> I'm way way better at talking than you, Ryan, and everybody knows that. I right? agree. On, I agree. I agree. This conversation right out of the seventy four. Said that though, Maddie, I, I mean, because it's it's not lost on me. I mean, I do appreciate everybody's patience. I mean, you know, Alex, Alex and, and, and you know, the degree as well. Have it's very much you know have have been extremely patient and want to get it right and like i'm i mean i'm honored and grateful i know it sounds sort of cheesy but like i do not take the responsibility lightly mm -hmm. that like i've been entrusted with this film and we're also trying to do more than who shot who from where like no just I, that has its place in media and we'll get there as another but like i mean you know we I mean, you know, right, right. Like we talked to your mom, like mm -hmm. we're, we're really talking about themes because I'm, I'm a, a director. And, and so we're also talking about themes like kind of coming of age in a Lord of the Flies type situation beyond just, and then there's all the personal stories and then there's, you know, the forming of dynasties. There's, there's a lot of layers there. So um, we, we're just trying to do justice to the story and, and, and to everybody. So, mm -hmm. um, Cheers we're tra we're, we're yeah. trucking along. Skull. Hell yeah. Who is uh Skull. who's Piggy? Skull. Is that Alex from Lord of the Flies? <laughs> you can't say super funny shit while I'm trying to drink my beer. <laughs> Fuck! I thought it was one of the rules. <laughs> hey guys, I'm everybody! Very, I want. I'm, I'm very I'm, susceptible I'm to laughing out loud. All the Ryan, thing shut up! Me, you know? Shut up! Where all the cons gets to talk? <laughs> oh man. Um... Yeah, you I, probably I mean, should use a fucking conch at the dynasty meetings. That would be great. Dude, our meetings. Well, I have the conch now. I'm um, allowed to speak. Everyone must shut no, up. Our meetings are money now. Dude. Our meetings <laughs> yeah, are because great. you've been winning everything. Yeah. <laughs> go go a couple of events without winning. We'll see how those meetings get go again. Um, but you were sorry. Last thing, I'll put a, like a button on that. I know you guys want to move on, but uh, we're also because Matt uses, as you know well, know well. This is how layered storytelling tells goes. Look, layered storytelling. Easy for me to say. Um, there's a whole sub storyline, you know, I have to push these faders correctly, but that is also the change of paintball in the golden era and then how dynasty fits into that, how you guys as kids and iron kids and the trend and the transition of how the game changed in the nineties. So, I mean, what that also means is like, there's Rocky Cagnoni interviews, there's Dave Youngblood. There's Rabelkoff, there's Eric Felix, who these are all maybe guys, maybe your listeners know, don't know, because they played roles and even if it's just influencing you guys as as kids that you're watching. And so there's part of that story. There's the Mare Island, there's the part, there's the Mare Island element of it, which is also a very large story. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. layers to pack in there. Dude, just to co sign on what he's saying, I don't, again, there, you can't overstate the importance of those layers. We're talking about the, mo the, the best paintball team that's ever played, San Diego Dynasty, contained within the context of these hierarchy of narratives where you have the sport itself changing, the way it's played, the technology's changing, the personnel's changing, all of this. And so you have all of these narratives rotating around the concept of what is San Diego Dynasty. It's a, it's a, it's a, that's a big story. That's a big story. For sure. So. We will probably, just so folks also, again, as much clarity and expectation as I can give folks of, obviously there's San Diego Dynasty's formation and some early dynasty in the arc, but like, you know, we're, we're only going like this far, right? In the journey mm -hmm. that is like this far. Um, so in a way that's, 
as filmmakers, and sorry, I know you guys want to get off this. No, no, um, it's all good. This is what we're here we for. We don't want to get off it. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is what okay. we're here. We're here yeah, to yeah. chat, man. There's uh, no, there's no schedule. We can nerd really, out on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, this is what everybody's here for. And hurry. Uh, sweet. Okay, yeah. I, I, I love it. Anytime. Yeah, whoever, whoever's driving the bus, though, anytime you need to move me, just just me be along. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, um, How about it? But like, you know, there's only so. We're only telling this part of the story. You know, their journey's so long. What's nice about that as like a filmmaker, and, and we've had people ask us, and I understand why, um, what's happening in the present day doesn't affect us at all. And in a way, like, that's nice. It's hard when you're doing a contemporary story. Like, we're working on an MMA doc on um, Rafian, uh, amazing dude named Rafian Stotts. Um, he was the Bellator bantamweight uh, champ. He got in the finals of their Grand Prix. Um, he's lost two fights in his career. That was one of them. Million dollar final. He caught a flying knee nine seconds in. Um, yeah. That greatly affects where we're, you know, it's not like we're not doing it, but it just, it changes your trajectory and your time frames and stuff like that. <clears throat> what is nice about Iron Kids is just what you guys are, are, are doing, you know, so the run that you're coming off of slash still on, that doesn't like affect you know what we're doing so in a little bit of a way it's an advantage well it doesn't affect it doesn't affect because it, the story's in the can but it definitely makes it way better <laughs> you know? it makes it way better because then it affects, and it affects interest right yeah for sure and, it, 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 it yeah. does affect things but the affect of the actual piece it, that's contained within those time lapse or the you know the, in, yeah. in the timeline the produ- it does yeah. i should say i should clarify man say it doesn't affect the production 100 percent of course, of course, because uh, the story you're 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 chasing a narrative that is in the past, which has its it's problematic in its own ways. But right. what's happening in the present can either you know magnify the importance of that story or submarine the importance. Because if Dynasty Absolutely. just had a, the worst two years of their careers instead of the best two years, then that's a completely different you know mm-hmm. bat bookend to the thing, and also could set up a part two in ten years. Who knows? We'll that's see how that's go. true. I, I think the part two is is being being well, it's being compiled. Yeah, yeah, it's being, it's written, being written, written currently. currently. And and actually, that's a that's a good <clears throat> question. I, I know that this is so difficult to ask and, and answer also. But um, uh, well, uh, there's there's a bunch of questions that uh, that a lot of people. Yeah, we've got a, sw- yeah. a bunch of questions. But actually, before I go into the the idea that the question of when this thing is actually going to come Alex? out, uh, we can we can add, we can throw Alex in here. Yeah, right now, um, if you want to put him in. But uh, what? So let's let's talk about this because this is a question that we had in uh, a little bit earlier here. Um, let me let me pull it up. Uh, whoops, here it was. Um, kind of like talking about shooting paintball versus uh, versus everything else. Obviously, paintball's not easy to shoot. Um, don't mind Kyle's hand here for a second while we get Alex in. But no worries. Um, what? What is it? What is it about paintball? And this is also going to kind of go into what uh, what we're talking about with with TV. What is it about paintball that makes it so difficult to shoot? What's and what up, and dude? what is it? Diff- what is it, Dan? <laughs> here we go. <laughs> What's up, bro? Out of the movie. What's up, bro? Cut all scenes with Ryan. Okay. Okay. I need a Ryan whole production schedule, then, dude. Can Ryan, you know? Ryan could have a solo. It'll be interview with a vampire. Wipe all scenes with Ryan. Leave his mom in, though. Ryan's mom, stay here. So you said some funny shit while well, I'm not doing it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, days, Ryan, shit. out. Man. So you're, I, okay, yeah, so that erases everything I just said. New timetable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to... 2025 release. Yeah. yeah. Half of uh, those pages... Movie, it's going to it's going to portray history as as I see it. Right, Maddie? <laughs> Isn't that how it works? Yeah. That's one way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. The history books are written by the, by the men with the do re mi and the big yeah. sword. <laughs> like Sometimes, it. absolutely. Seen, that is. For a long, for a long period of time, yeah. Have you seen the uh, Gladiators, the American Gladiators talk? No, I want to see it. I just saw that you posted that. I, I was like really intrigued about that. I, I don't know. cable, but... Well, yeah, no, I, I need to watch that too. The director's around. Alex, when you watch that movie, remember this comment that you just said because it was definitely play into <laughs> I know they they alluded to well, actually in your podcast. I haven't even seen the doc yet, but I listened to the podcast talking about the protagonist of the movie and how you know watching him interact during the production of the movie is is actually a better way to figure out who he is than l- listening to stories that he's telling about himself or somebody else's. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, yeah uh, interesting um, interesting look. And yeah, I'm excited to watch it. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably go throw that on after I watch finish up the bear, of course. 
reruns of sorry, but Ryan, to answer your question, and then I would honestly, I would love to have Alex answer it because he's just new to getting filming. Oh yeah, now uh, that he's a filmmaker, don't don't <laughs> stroke him <laughs> off at all, dude. <laughs> Stop it, Dan. <laughs> don't even give him that. Yeah, yeah. He is. Yeah. Um, he, he, there's not a focal point. There's there's not a single. Um, and, and you know, I mean, I'm I probably inherit a lot of this perspective from Brad Vaughn. You know. I coached me up forever, but it is reality. There's not a single ball. There's thousands of them. There's not like a single uh-huh. focal point. There's not a single spot or, or thing that you know, no matter what, like in the NFL, I know we're going to line up, you know, roughly, you know, five, five linemen, depending on what the formation is on each side, the balls, it's always going to start yeah. here. These things are always going to happen. So it's always so difficult. Field design plays a huge part in it. You know, you're on some level playing in the fact that you are like, okay, I think Alex is going to go here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, you know, we would sort of refer to something maybe like, well, I'm going to sell out. Um, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to focus to get uh, like a great shot on this spot. The thing is, is like once he dies or if I don't get this, I can't see anything else from where I am. Um, And I'm really, I guess, speaking in the way of being a handheld filmer down on the field. And then, you know, sometimes, right, it's real life. Alex gets shot off. Somebody gets shot off the break. Somebody dies coming in. And then even if I get the awesome shot I want, I'm doing it in the way of compiling nuggets to stick in a montage later not trying to articulate to somebody you know i mean that's where obviously you know maddie and rich and all those guys in the booth but there's that difficulty of to make sense of the madness yeah i mean five different in a way five individual battles but they all roll up into one another but there's actually not one focused thing that they're on. Um, and then they may be obstructed by things that are that are in the way. Um, and you're getting shot by the paintballs yourself, depending on where you're at also. Incredibly difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it's clearly the that one focal point that I think really, really hurts. But I, you know what, you know, it's you know what the beauty of it is. Uh, you get more personalities to showcase. Is that a good thing, right? Like, whereas, you know, in MMA or the, the, the one team, one player sports or something like that, you get to you get to pick a little bit more. And especially if you're as lucky as Dan and yourself to well, know people like Alex, Josh, Oliver, and I who have, uh, you know, you, you get to... It, it is, a, it, well... You multiple know, I mean, personality yes, disorder. The, well, the more charismatic <laughs> the individual is, the easier it is to help tell their story because they have a... You know, interesting story to tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to discuss or break down the inherent awesomeness of paintball, but also the inherent difficulties to translate it into something that can be, you know, because what you're doing is whether creating a documentary or a live broadcast or a television show or whatever it may be, you're you you have to create a digestible nugget that you're giving to the world and expecting them to, them to consume, um, and digestible you know is the is the operative word in that mm-hmm. you know so that's kind of a, with paintball it is a very chaotic thing the same thing that makes us love the game makes it a very difficult thing to you know create content around because it is so chaotic mm-hmm. um you know there you know there i mean it's there's no ball there are, are thousands of balls they are going at twice the speed of a major league fastball it's you know very hard to pick that up on camera um, you have positions, but no one plays necessarily a specific set position 100% of the time, other than maybe Billy Bernaccia. Um, you know, so it's, 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 and even he, he's going to go to different places, you know? So, you know, again, we could literally discuss and spend eight hours talking about, you know, it's like hockey, there's football, there's baseball, there's all these different sports, mixed martial arts, all the board sports, you know, whether we're talking about combat sports or board sports or extreme sports or car racing or whatever. But as far as the focal point, in paintball it's really hard because the you know the and inherently what we've done is you know take the concept of this you know it started as a war game as a survival game it was literally called the survival game when it began and we've all undergone and we can discuss this too depending on where people want to take the conversation 
but we've changed the sport intentionally, not from the bottom up saying, hey, we want to play this because it's more fun. It's been changed from the top down to make it more filmable and more digestible. I'll stop there. Oftentimes, because there's a lot and, to talk about. But. And oftentimes, that last, off of that last part though, Maddie, oftentimes, um, in the mind's eye of what civilians, as I refer to them oftentimes, think film creatives, whatever you want to call us, want there to be. And not necessarily at, like, there's very few instances where a director, you know, even, I mean, one of the, so one of the instances that does come to mind was, uh, the, uh, it used to be called ESPN 360. It's there. It was their streaming that Brad was the producer and showrunner of, and like Brad had full control over that. Film. Yeah. Yeah. Also a retired film, you know, film school graduate and gifted. And also, you know, in his day, one of the best, best ball players of all time. That's a great combo, but you know, it's not like that. You have a lot of people making guesses. So there's even there's even things like, cons- that, and I don't mean to get too in the weeds, right, but that are also almost impossible to articulate visually, like without, and I think you guys have the hardest, <laughs> you guys and Darren and Go Sports, anybody doing it live have the hardest job. But like things like concedes that make no fucking sense visually. Like, I don't understand what that is. Little things that have been taken away, like, again, just as a, like nuggety fizz, like, there's no more flags. So there's no Nikki Cuba taking it off the pole and fucking sticking it in somebody's face in a snotty way. And I understand, look, I'm not, <laughs> I, you know, I know things are done for a reason and I'm not, you know, necessarily being critical of or saying that they're better than buzzers. I'm not in that position. I'm just saying that from a filming, you're starting to take away some things or some things that have been taken away, even once it's evolved into speedball and more sport that start to get you know make it very difficult to articulate visually yeah. they're waiting for me to have an outburst i was thinking of your outburst now Alex, you've, 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 you've been behaving <laughs> very well actually pissed me off because what, what you just said about the flag so oliver's got this one-on-one thing that they're doing and maddie you'll like this so Instead of having a scoreboard, I wanted to have an analog scoreboard. So it's basically if it's ten on ten. Are we talking about like Little League? League? Like somebody we're paying somebody to put the like Boston the... almost like that, but like you know what this you know what the fair the knockdown clowns that you throw the ball at yeah yeah so it's like that right so that's the scoreboard and if you win a one on one like you medieval get jousting the other teams knockdown clowns and shoot one down and like oh, it's like you know God. extinguishing the flame of your opponent. Oliver's like, no, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> well, I, you know, okay. to speak to to what Dan is saying is that, <laughs> and then you uh, get to talk shit, you know, it, you know, is that you know, it, the thing is, is that paintball is this visual spectacle, and but it is a visual spectacle that is confusing. Um, so what we love about the spectacle of paintball to the casual viewer becomes a Byzantine labyrinth of confusion, and. <laughs> Just uh, saying that is, 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 is yeah. yeah well, if anybody is, is, is unsure of what that means, it means exactly how it sounds. Just yeah, Google yeah, it, bro. Yeah, you just, have a supercomputer in your pocket. Byzantine. I'm not trying to dump shit down for everybody. Um, but the I thing, would rather watch the Byzantine Labyrinth than Painful. <laughs> but the thing is, so, but that, so, but again, you know, it, it, this is, uh, this has been a push and a pull for the sport of paintball since cameras started showing up and we, and, and, and everyone started thinking, okay, we love this. What is it about this that we can use visual media as a conduit to get other people to give a shit about it? It's just very difficult because, again, started in the woods. We can talk about those shows. Um, and as it progressed forward and then the sport itself into hyperball, into airball, into X-ball, into its different iterations of X-ball. And then all these little slight changes that have happened. I mean, even going down to how the games are scheduled. But the one of the issues that we have is that you have a situation where paintball is different in this in many different ways, but it's also very different in the sense that when we come in as Go Sports, there's an event happening that we have to capture live. All the television shows that we all that I worked on, and all the television shows that happened pre webcast era era were all shot and then produced in post production, which is mm-hmm. also problematic because that's extra expensive. Um, but all the so the, the and I could tell those stories. Um, but and and in fact, when Patrick Spore came to me and was like, "Hey, this is you know mid to late 
two thousands, two thousand seven ish. He was like, "Hey, I know you've done these TV shows. Do you think you guys? Do you think you call the game live? Because I think I could broadcast it live. I don't know if we can capture what's happening live, but we could try. And I've just got say used to saying yes a lot <laughs> to all these different people at different times for different productions. <laughs> um, it's kind of been the story of my career. What do you What do you want to do? Oh, that sounds fucking cool. Okay, yeah, I'll do it. You know, like, yeah, um, I can get that done. Yeah, we could try. But uh, <laughs> so, but that's a problem. So something like that, Alex. It's like so. You know, basically, Dan saying, "All right, we're taking away visual spectacle that will help intrigue a human mind." This isn't biology. This is fucking. I'm sorry. This isn't psychology. This is biology. It's the way a human brain consumes time, instances, moments, story, uh, and and so it's like well, that's kind of what we're playing around with because it is. Right. At the end of the day, people in a gunfight, which is not going to be something that everyone's going to love. You you get you get visual you get visual spectacle or you get visual articulation of character. If Nikki pulls that flag off and goes, half the audience is going to be like, "I fucking like that dude." Half the audience is going to be like, "That guy's a fucking asshole." Like that's bad sportsmanship. Yeah, and you're like, "Great," because now <laughs> I have somebody either way who mm-hmm. genuinely. Cares. Yeah, yeah. But, but also, but the thing, Dan, and this is what kind of, the, and you, you, you'll, you know this. We've talked about this at, at length for you know, hours and hours and hours over time. But with with paintball, is that, you know, so sport certain sports have evolved and they're pretty easily visible you know whereas with paintball we've had this constant roving conversation over time from the powers that be and the people that play it and that's a push in the pole there too because you have you know everyone honestly this isn't even like just a charitable look at it like almost everyone i've worked with you know even including these tv producers that are coming in but the problem is is like you have an event happening people are playing this event that's the fun for them we're coming in trying to capture this thing that's happening that's incredibly difficult to capture how can we tinker and change with these things a little bit to make that easier to capture to then create a digestible nugget that we give to the world to consume as its own thing? Because this thing that people consume and what's happening live are two different things. Right. You know, so that's also part of the conversation as well, too. And paintball has made drastic changes throughout the years. Again, we did not, you know, as somebody that lived through the, this era as a top level pro player on a team that was winning tournaments, like we didn't make these changes because we were... We oh, we don't want to play 10 minutes boring. We don't want to do this anymore. We want to play X ball. That, that's not how that happened. You know, then we, you know, or we don't, we don't want to play in the woods anymore. That's boring. We want to play hyper ball. We were down to play hyper ball. We were down to play air ball. That was fun too. But then we left that to the side from a competitive nature because it was hard to spectate. We understood that for the greater good, we're going to try to push it from that perspective to make it more condensed and easier to digest. You know, but those weren't, that was, that was a top down decision. That wasn't a grassroots. We love this. There's this overwhelming upswell because Expo was literally just created and kind of like, like, you guys down to do this? We could get a TV show thing. We're going to try to chase that dream for a little bit. You know, and we're like, all right, cool. This is, I guess what we're doing now. And, and as a player at the time, I just wanted to play against the best. I was like, well, what's everyone else doing? What does everyone else think? You know, cause I, I just, I want to go, you know, and, and contending gunfight against the best players in the world. So that's what we all kind of collectively just kind of chased. Obviously, the dream, the competition. But again, this is a long, long, long conversation that so one day I'll write a book. But it's just not right now. That, Matt. What's up? Like, I want to build two. I want to build two things off off of what you just said because that's that's super valid. I think there's one thing to remember, or that is a consideration, is if you're old enough to be our age or even a little bit older like if you were old enough to watch the nfl in the 1970s you've seen the rules start to be drastically adjusted to create more offense because offense has through their you know test marketing been um proven to like increase ratings nine nine six games that's all field goals are ratings disasters. Um, the fact that, you know, Patrick Mahomes is three touchdowns down and is not out of the games is a rating for Nansa. Yeah. Same, with that, Same with baseball. Same with baseball. The second thing that builds off that in, in consideration, and this is where, you know, paintball's in uh, an interesting spot. I mean, I referenced earlier that Rafi on Stott's talk. You know, I mean, I'm on a call with the, you know, VP of legal at Paramount um, because they own Bellator and we're talking about, you know, our, our process and our, our budget to license footage from them. And 
Bellator, the fight is Bellator's product. They don't give a shit about selling gloves or MMA gyms. I mean, they obviously care that it goes on, but like their product is solely in the business as the industry, right? Of the media. The media is their ultimately their product. Pickball is in a really interesting spot, you know, where it's like, you know, right? Like Ryan, you know, or Kyle, um, are you guys going to benefit more if you sell twice as much signature guns or the viewership is twice what it is right now? And that's not about anybody being greedy, but that's about the mechanism where it's like, you know, PayPal still want, is, wants to get people to participate because that's what the industry's built on, right? So that's a whole nother layer that goes into this complex, you know, media yeah um, well there and there and that's just, and there's many layers there because you know you have the nxl wants people to come to the nxl but they also want people to play paintball because they're the tip of the spear because people playing paintball will then over time gravitate people towards wanting to play the premier league and then every single one of those companies the paint companies want to sell more paint so anytime we have limited paint conversations like that's part of it you know yeah and then again this is <laughs> not worth breaking down the levels there um yeah and then and I, i'm looking at some of these comments too about yeah. you know some of like the technical things like oh it's like five on five death match we need like a mini map okay well in order to do that i'm gonna need somebody to write me a big ass check because i need to gps every single player i need to create a graphical interface that will be able to exist within the framework of a live show and that shit needs to work like clockwork <coughs> that's not off the shelf capabilities necessarily and if it is it's going to be incre incredibly problematically expensive um, or somebody said we need you know cameras on wires. We have a camera on a wire. Yeah, we do. We have a camera on a wire. We have a live drone shot. So I mean, over time, yeah. and you know, things do, you know, unless you want to, and even if you want to throw a billion dollars at it, it things happen incrementally. You know, so like we have brought camera on. We do have a cable cam. We do have a live drone shot. We are trying to implement these certain things. So there's, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, you know, point, you know, I think you're right. I think that the reality though is that I mean, all of you guys have been around long enough to know and have seen the different uh ways that paintball has been broadcast or uh displayed to try to make it work on tv and uh and the unfortunate reality is is that's it, the technology simply isn't there yet to really capture paintball portray paintball. capture what's happening in the game yeah which it, I mean, do, you, do you think there's, just there's a multitude you... of problems i mean i'm disillusioned i'm jaded whatever um, uh, Maddie, I think you need to read an effing book, and and I think that the only real way out of this is you have to combine paintball with uh, some sort of dating show like Paintball Love Island, <laughs> Paintball Bachelor. Hey, um, you it's know, funny. No, you're right. No, no you you're are right. totally uh, right. And, and I so would, this is just what real I was quick. Say, yeah. I just want to talk real quick before you talk because uh, um, I love you, but I'm sorry right. to see yeah, my show. show. It's but no, show. no, it's not my show. <laughs> but, the, but this is so Chris Rail. No, to count. To, hey, to, hey, Alex is right. Chris Rail. This is years ago before you met Camille, before you had your kid, and you're in your relationship. But I remember Chris Rail saying something. He was, and it's funny because Alex kind of maybe half joking, but he was like, you know what we need. He's like, we need someone like Ryan Greenspan to start dating an actress. Does he know any actresses? We need Ryan Greenspan or somebody like Ryan to get in there and like be on one of those reality TV shows. And that will help, you know, create. But it's it's everything. Another thing, too, to keep in mind as we have this discussion, it's like, oh, what does paintball need to become mainstream? Dude, since in the past 30 years, we've had, I mean, eight or nine TV shows, multiple video games. It's been on a tons of different sitcoms and television shows. It's been in 7-Eleven commercials. It, 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 it is. We have. We, yeah, there's like a 7-Eleven paintball or a commercial that like featured some paintball shit. Huh. It's my point is it's been on like it's utilized as a lever like, oh, let's use paintball as like a creative lever to do this funny commercial. It's already mainstream. What do we do now? Do you think a big solve though for all all the issues is in obviously the technology is not there yet or it would be really expensive is this that we could visually see how the paintball is traveling, whether it's Oh, dude, none of those shit is the answer. No. That's not the answer. You, just, so there's it, 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 no, there's sorry. no there's no answer the answer is we need to we need to you just said there was no answer within our yeah circle the, the wagons that's uh, the answer yeah that's right we need to circle, circle the, the wagons, wagons bro i've been make, saying this for years make cool shit that we care about yep. in our world yep and if if that if we can instead of trying to grow the sport we we should just really try to fortify what is already here 
and I that's one of the reasons like I mean making a paintball movie is financially the stupidest possible thing you can do we and love you though Alex too. and I, I support your yeah. financial decision to throw a bunch of money at making a paintball movie yeah so, so, so thank, for, thank you everybody but, who but bought that, um, reason, some merch on Hormesis today that, yeah buy Hormesis shit by the way that, you know I and I feel like my my uh, my peers want to see that's it. I agree like, with so you, though, a because couple things that I I think need to be understood by by folks. Um, the first one, and this is a super super old example, but like, I mean, it's and it's kind of off like what you're talking about, Alex. Right? Is that like skateboarding didn't like dial up their phone and call ESPN? Like, so the the, the first the first thing that everyone needs to understand out there is that television exists to sell advertising. Yeah. That's literally its function. That's why bro- broadcast and cable, you know, broadcast, ABC, CBS, NBC, streaming, I don't even really in a way want to deal with. I mean, you have David Zaslav coming out in September and he's doing it strategically, but the head of Warner Discovery going like, oh, we don't know how to make money from this. This is all, we don't even know how this works. Yeah, that's true. Um, so you got to understand that first. Like, that's the function of that. Yeah. Um, you take it to modern day, what people are doing, though, is the only thing that is getting any kind of ratings and getting and they're generating disproportionately high rights fees are live sports. And so it kind of in a way like what Alex is, is talking about is if you can get revenue from television rights to put back into your infrastructure that's your world that's everything from and i think in a lot of ways like look i mean if we fast if if we rewind to like 2003 and you go hey look dan so in 20 years there's gonna be a thing where for like nine dollars a month you get like all of these like broadcast quality things of the tournament like you're not on warpig like you know milfa obviously god bless don and bill mills from the time but trying to figure out what the scores are like there's documentaries in there there's all these kinds of things like that you've got this kind of like resurgence in this like younger creators class is is, i kind of like you know your ryan moffitt's and paintball nerd and 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 dylan and rye guy and i know i'm leaving out i don't know a lot of the, the youngest but you've got all of this infrastructure stuff coming you know, you've got the Iron Kids doc that we're doing. You've got what Alex and Nico are, are doing. It's like, there's a lot of, like, super, super positives there. And then I don't know that, uh, you know, TV's the end-all, be-all. Because, again, Matt, like, something else that you were saying, 100%. if you look at these other – and I think you have to look at what you would call fringe sports or sports entertainment. On some levels, looking at baseball, basketball – football that are centuries is almost a century old or change is kind of laughable you have to look at some of these other things like you know you're you're seeing them as part of a collective of these other things that that they're doing like television isn't the the like end all be all but it's the 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 mechanism so like an example um, which you guys all know I talk about all the time and everybody I'm sure at home especially will roll their eyes but you shouldn't because there's a lot to learn from you know the sports entertainment of like pro wrestling like all elite wrestling who's owned by the Khan family who own the Jacksonville Jaguars they have three shows now on Warner Discovery but their their fulcrum their mechanism is they sell $50 pay-per-views four times a year so okay cool so now we have this thing because like I think you said it Maddie like okay we've been on TV but like now what Okay, yeah. what what is the what? Like, I saw the thing on television, and I think we I think we would still be on TV if our our industry wasn't so politically fucked up. That's I that's mean, that's ratings, pretty much ratings, what it is. <laughs> the ratings were always good on those paintball shows because it was interesting, even though it was hard to assimilate. Like, it was it was interesting enough to where there was eyes on it. It beat out a lot of the stuff it was against in its time slot, and. Um, Mm-hmm. And I feel like if it was handled properly, it probably still would have been on TV as some a somewhat regular thing. Well, I definitely yeah. don't necessarily disagree with that, but that's also kind of. But but also, the, if you look at the <clears throat> yes, t- live sports is the only the only thing keeping the way that the infrastructure currently works with like c- cable TV is live sports. Shit, the only reason I fucking have. Uh, TV at my house is to watch uh, Pottery's games. That's literally the only reason why I'm paying 
the money, you know, because mm-hmm. everything else we consume with all the other things that we have. Right. But also there has been a drastic change in the way that people consume media. If you go, just Google it. <clears throat> Everyone go home. If you're at home right now and minimize this screen and Google viewership on television. Let's not tell every, anybody to leave. Yeah, great, great, Maddie. Yeah, yeah, don't leave, yeah. Right yeah now, leave right now. Stop watching this and close go do this. Close out no, this I YouTube said show. minimize this you and did, continue to listen to it. Don't minimize it. Keep it's us like, full screen, okay, Minimize man. means, okay, whatever. Uh, my yeah, point is, is that... Maddie. Blow us up. Okay, whatever. But the point is is that go and just... This is e- easily Googleable. You can find this out for yourself. Like, it, it, And everyone probably knows this within the context of their own lives and how they consume things. So... And we and I definitely agree. You know, Dan, you had said this, and Alex, we've talked about this, and you know, we've all probably had this conversation before. But I really do think we are seeing a, a, like a reemergence of a new golden age of paintball content. Because when I go to the events, like Jesus Christ, man, I have so many cool conversations with creators that are, and it's not even, and it's, and it's, it's definitely like the standard guys, you know, like the guys that are there at every yeah. single event, and they're doing their thing. Um, but it's also just people are coming up like, I want to do a documentary. I've been out for 10 years and I'm here and I want to do this. And there's just so much of this now, mm-hmm. more than I've ever seen. It literally used to be, you know, first it was just Pat and then it was Pat and Dirt or Rob. And then Dan was there and then, you know, and certain guys go in and out and then, you know, Pat left and Dirt was still doing it. Rob was still doing it for a little bit. You know, then Dan took over. But we weren't talking about a lot of human beings walking around capturing these stories. Now there's like 10 of them. And it's awesome, and they all are super passionate about it, and and the, because that's how pe- human beings are consuming information. So things are changing so quickly, you know. So it's it's one of those things where like this is also awesome, but also we are watching a gla- you know, like a you know, kind of a, a massive change in the climate of of, of you know, <coughs> continuing how media is consumed, how, how many people are producing it. So there's like so many different stories out yeah, there. Yeah, but so Maddie, do you do you feel that there and, and Dan for you too, and I guess Alex, if you want to chime in on this, do you, do you feel like there's a? Uh, if you're at home, I want you to hit that dislike button. Yeah. <laughs> Did they build the dislike button? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you feel that there's a, a path to live live network show? Because like like you said, there and and there are plenty of branches and offshoots of of uh, of every sports piece. But the, the ticket is is kind of a live show. Do you feel like a live show is the best, or do you feel like a pre a post production with it's a lifestyle it. thing? It's right, co- you need to have both. Right, you yeah. can't have you or do you want to put lifestyle segments into a live well, show. First of all, there would be like and, and just well, sorry, real quick, because I would say I would say that that one of the most successful things or the most successful thing for uh, the the rise of the Formula One is a, the best example was their Netflix Netflix. Oh, I can't wait to talk about this. Well, well, but, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I want to. I would just that. like to state in the U.S. Yes. Sorry, in but, the U.S. But Formula One was also a multi-billion-dollar business before to begin Netflix with. touched it. I understand. Same yeah, with that. PGA. Oh, and look, the, just this. answer Ryan's question. It's an important question, and I think it is an important my, question. My short and my short answer to that is the live broadcast can work, and the way to do that is keep doing what we're doing. You just keep making Go Sports a little bit better, a little bit better. Tech will evolve. There's going to be at some point uh, a camera that you can you can link up to and you can cut to people's you know barrel cams during the game. Yep, that you would be can, amazing. You're, you're going to be able to you know mm. cut to what they're saying Play during the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to well, be the wire able to, cam used to be your, like your heads up display of the little red dots moving around, around the radar. Yeah, you're going to have all those things in five ten years. Yeah. Like it will be there, and then the webcast is going to be good enough to where a network or a Netflix or somebody who's interested in broadcasting live sports, who, who knows what it's going to be like at the time, is going to come and say, hey, I'll buy that. And that's, that's, that's what will happen. Well, and, and I also think that, you know, again, not to completely shit on TV, because maybe we, you know, again, live sports is TV saving grace, so maybe we could help be that saving grace, not opposed to that. Uh, definitely also, I couldn't agree more, Alex, is that as much as like, we just have to, as having done this now for, I mean, this is my, literally my 20th year calling paintball games, 2020 or 2003 was the first time I ever called a paintball game, uh, for Huntington beach and did that. And that was like a TV show too. And that was kind of a fucking crazy shit show, but you know, and, and a lot of them have been, but yes, the technology is, is, is advancing. We already, some of these things that people are asking for, we already have, like we already have a cable cam. We have a drone shots. We Lauren Kelly's going to be coming back, I think, for this next one. I don't know if we can keep her long term because she has a big girl job, but we will, you know, have somebody in that position. There's a lot of these different, you know, check boxes that we can complete. But when we think, you know, on like the grand scale of where we're trying to go with this, well, then yes, that as the technology emerge evolves and emerges, eventually 
you know, having a, an interface where you have barrel cams on every single uh, on every single guy, a GPS where you can follow them and have a heads up display where we know where people are. Like this is all feasible in the future. It's just going to be, at least as it stands right now, problematically expensive. Um, but we could all do that. But the thing is, is that at the end of the day, that's and then I've talked about this a ton of times. As I always say this is my five fingers of the sports marketing fist: heroes, history, ongoing narrative, spectacle, and statistics. Paintball is very confusing for people that don't know it. And so you have to have an extra part of the narrative. I still have to deal with this all the time where I'll, you know, things are going down and I hear all these shit behind the scenes and people are like, okay, Maddie, I'll tell you this, but you can't tell anybody. You know, and I'm like, okay. And I keep a lot of secrets and that's do fine. Want, do you want to air some of them? I don't right have now? any secrets. Oh, we've had a couple of those. We could put, we, we have, put all we put, and have, have I, have you, I, have, you've never, do you've I keep always, your secrets? You've always hey, okay. Secrets. Should so, we put a pair of goggles on you and a voice enhancer and you can spill all the secrets? It would secrets? be really good for paintball, <laughs> you know, because that's not how regular sports works, but I will keep people's secrets, you know, because if Kyle Spicka calls me and I'm, we're buddies and you're like, I need some advice. And I'm like, I got you, dog. Let's do it. You can't tell anyone. Okay. I won't tell anybody, you know, but. But but not, but even some frivolous shit, you know. For instance, like Jerry Carl gets in a car accident. I, Bo Milo texts me. He's like, "All right, this is what's happening. Don't tell anyone." I'm like, "Okay, I'm not gonna tell anybody." But that's a that's a that's a symptom of a problem in pro paintball. Here's, like, here's it, the thing, Ryan. No, well, this already happened. Time. We already it was already out. <laughs> yeah. Like that's if that news is broken. Dan, Dan's, I'll sorry. answer your question. With, I mean, I've I've had the same opinion for almost two decades. But I'll answer your question with a question because nobody seems to ask it. Your, your question, right? Live or post-production game? That's the essence of your question. Yeah. Who's the audience? I think it's the same audience. Ryan's mom. Soccer yeah, mom. Yeah, <laughs> that's what everyone's told me all these well, years. Here's the, here's that's the bullshit. Point. It's not the so, soccer mom. So who are, who's our demographic? No, not not even necessarily in the broad. Like, who who is watching? Who Who is watching our, um, you know, our fictional show that's on television? We are. We're the only people watching. No, I disagree. I disagree. I think <laughs> Alex. I think obviously, gonna... he's the one paying so, for it. So what are you talking about, so Dan? We already had this conversation. Dan, Dan, this is this is. I think I think it's a it's a waterfall effect, right? I think that it starts with everybody in the industry and in any industry, whether it's cornhole bag, whatever it's called, bean bag, cornhole douche bag, ba douche bag, um, <laughs> that game, or if it's like pool or darts or whatever it is, it's that industry first. Then you have then you have the trickle down effect of the scrollers, the people who are just like I need to find something, and it's suggested for them because they watched something stupid in the past. And yes, I'm categorizing paintball in that obscure stupid category because they're probably talking the same shit that I'm talking. Then it, ass assuming that we can create a good product, and this is back to what Alex was saying is the last products we created were good. The problem is the politics kept it out of renewal so a lot of times. And the, and the sponsor, the industry support sponsors didn't, didn't, didn't take with that also. They weren't vibing. Here's the issue with that perspective. Right. And, and, and that's kind of been from a television standpoint. And this has kind of been from the television business standpoint. And this is kind of, that's kind of been the, the pervasive, uh, um, you know, if you ask a bunch of people over the years of things that have been made in PayPal, that's probably why they're doing it. Television audiences don't necessarily work like that. And the thing is, the core audience, mm -hmm. and this is when I get to talk about Drive to Survive because I'm so excited about that, um, <laughs> is feels differently than what you would call the casual audience, the general audience, the broad audience. And sure. what you deliver to them sometimes is differently because what I feel like, I, th I think the Ghost Sports and the live broadcast is an awesome project. It's, it's an awesome product, but you need to be a, like, whatever it is, like a level seven Zelda player. Like, you need to understand. But that's our audience, Dan, because that's who that's who's paying us to bring them the and thing. And that's why it's not on television, because yeah. that audience is not big enough for a network executive to be confident that they can sell advertising to. Now, right. let's talk about Drive to Survive, which everybody loves so much, but nobody seems to know the mechanics of it. Yes, well, break you know, this I, No, let him break this well, down. No, this but first, I just want to say something about that, too, is that I, I totally understand where you're going at with that, and I like see the correlation with paintball because I don't want to watch a whole race. I don't really find watching a race exciting, but I fucking love that show. Yeah, because you're a human being and you love drama and narrative. Yeah. We're, that's well, that's how saying, we're built. That's how our brains seen, are built. Have you guys seen um, 
most of the press on um, drive drive to survive over like the last month, like what's been in the 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 press about the series. Mm-mm. Enlighten us, Dan. I like I like um, where you're going with this. I this one is of, good. One of the most prominent drivers. Um, and this is real. This is super important to PayPal, also because everybody, like, I, I can't talk to somebody right in in PayPal anywhere that wants to talk about TV and not talk about Drive to Survive. So this is awesome. I'm glad it came up. Um, and I'm not a big Formula One guy, um, and I kind of petered out into the second and third seasons of, of the show, so I don't remember this driver's name. But there's a driver um, who, after the first two seasons or the first, two, he's been gone for season two, three, four. He's fuck you guys because everything's fake as hell everything has been they are um the producers are like all quote-unquote reality shows are manipulating um like feuds that don't really exist Mm -hmm. um and there's starting to be a backlash apparently for some of the core i'm not a core formula one guy so i can't speak to that i love the show like maddie says all this awesome people and drama it's very strange. This drivers agreed to return because they've um, expressed, in essence, they're going to handle him in a more like a documentary uh, well, fashion. Yeah, but that's the that is is and always has been that reality show angle. You have to create. You guys know this. You have right, to create. This is the point. this is the big I problem. Mean, yeah, go ahead. Is, is to Sorry, you guys as as the as the athletes. I can't answer this, and as the industry, like. How comfortable are you? Because everybody is like, we want to be. Let's do just like Drive to Survive. They're like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. can we right. make up fake things? <laughs> put important, put importance on things that are not important. Like, or or overstate. Like, I'm trying to think of something really. I got it. It's this. antagonism drives attention. That's how it works. Yeah. You know, like you create an antagonism where this person's versus this person, or, and half the time it's bullshit in some of these things. The, right. When Drive to Survive first came out, and I started reading up on that show and I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is cool, and I like what Netflix has done, and they're using the same model that HBO had used with, and then with, it's just, it's a, with right. a little what bit more extra. Again, what, what is your, what, name it again? Heroes, history, ongoing yeah, okay. narrative, spectacle, and statistics. Ryan okay, so and Ryan heroes, Greenspan right? is the You're sixth new talking... kitten finger over here. Because if you don't have Ryan, then what are you doing? About heroes and narrative. So within paintball, that's a failure of ghost sports right now. Is heroes what? And narrative. I yeah. think they're, they're, we're failing at that. We're, we're unable to create the heroes in the narrative because well, we've been we're trying, unable dude. To, we're unable to get in and, and drill down into those people because, number one, it's up to them whether they want to be accessible or Exactly. Not. But so how is that my failure number, when I can't get two, motherfuckers to talk on camera part, about right? some important shit? You know, like if right, I'm like, like hey, best, you want to talk about part, this? Like, the and they're like, no, can't part, do it. The most interesting part of the tournament for me was when Ryan walked off after not having the air when Oliver didn't fill his air and he fucking smashed his goggles down on the table and he was pissed off. Yeah, right? and it, we, I didn't no, even know that about that till the show. Yeah, but no, how do I put that on the show? show. I didn't even know I didn't even know what was happening. How am I supposed I know. to know about that? I'm how am I supposed no, to know about no, that? Like, I'm like, not omniscient. Cool. We're not omniscient as a production company. If if well, I don't it, know what's happening, I can't talk about it. I'm not I'm not I'm not criticizing you. All all I'm saying is I feel like the whole Nikki Cuba thing with fuck you and the flag we need to either find okay. it, which it's there, or create it. I understand. Here, so I think just... Maddie already answered that question. Um, it ha- has to do with budget and money. Oh, you can't even see this. It's all to reflect. There so, it is. Just, dollar so, signs. A couple things there. You nope. have to be yes. able to, to add more cameras, yeah, to but, be more people, 100%. to be able to pay but us the, to create but, the no, things but, but, but and but the also, narrative. But understand, like, it, it, I could throw, we could throw a million a quadrillion dollars out of pick a fucking fake number out of the air if I, sounds good. if I can't get somebody to be honest about the antag- antagonism yeah. that drives then that person's not attention. on the show what's up that's easy that person is not on the show no I'm with that that's the that was what I mentioned I touched so, to this way earlier let today me, Just, let me ask let me ask you guys a, a, a question the, sure. the three active pro players mm-hmm. like and, and also speaking on you know kind of behalf of like just call it the tournament scene or whatever. How comfortable would you be with the show that I don't mean accentuates like that really that story that Alex just told that really happened. How comfortable would you be with the show that and I'm not I'm it's just a question. I'm gonna have a neutral perspective that misrepresents things. Like Kyle, like what you know, are you guys comfortable 
if it is a boon because the Formula One, I mean, Drive to Survive helped Formula One triple its rights fees with ESPN. Yeah, I mean, I think if I was in a position of a Formula One driver, I wouldn't want something misrepresented because you're already, you're already making a ton of money. Exactly, but that's in, it. Right in there. this position, I think that okay. there's, you know, there's some leeway there because, like, how that's much? Fair answer. If I'm I getting, if I'm, if I'm paying my own way to do things, and then on top of that, I'm being misrepresented, that's a problem. Yeah. But currently, right now, to the 250 plus people that are watching this live, and the extra couple thousand people that are going to watch it later, that are going to watch it later, that are like, I wish that there was a a, a a a way that I could both play paintball and make a living, which is so few and far between, and that's the biggest problem, right? And that's what this holy grail, as I mentioned in the in the comment section of, and the reason that paintball players back in the day weren't allowed to play with us is because there was this TV deal, right? Tripling the revenue stream. To, to ESPN for, for Formula One when Max Verstappen, I believe that's who, who opted out of being in Formula One, who's also one of the highest paid drivers, he doesn't give a shit about the extra cash that he's going to get from there because he's already being paid enough money not to care about that and to only focus on his job. Also, but don't because forget, it's a legacy industry. We are not right. a legacy industry. But, but we, also, we don't, could don't be. Don't forget the two other things with Drive to Survive. I hope that, so. Like, there we go. One, we're on, that's the my entire adult life I've been fucking working on. That. I hope so. They, op- they opted not to because this was a huge gamble that was outside of their, um, you know, purview. And, you know, this was something that got them a foothold. Um, they had most of their, you know, footprint, their, their footprint in Europe compared to America was like laugh- laughable. And so that's yeah. probably that why they were game for giving Netflix. You, look, there's a couple things ha- that happened there. They're game for giving Netflix that kind of access. They also had trust because it's the production company who did the the Senna, I believe is how you pronounce it. That's how much I know about Formula One. But who did the Senna doc. Um, that was maybe eight years before it, it came on there. And so I wasn't asking you guys that question, by the way, about manufacturing stuff to be a dick or even saying I'm against it. No, it's, it's important to for, ask that question. It, it is just for folks to understand. Like if we want to grab from things or understand what's going on, and like Formula One... I was just reading this article the other day. Their core, and this is why I asked that other question, their core fan base is expressing dis, uh, being disheartened with the show and For being sure. upset because, you know, they're saying, like, I'm trying to think of something that's like, barrel socks are the most important thing in the world. Right, exactly, exactly. Like that, right? <laughs> yes, that's exactly it, dude. And you're never going to make a perfect product. There's not going to be 100% of people that in, that are that are happy with what came out and right. and unfortunately yeah, and good, you know that people can make a living mm-hmm. if you can triple your rights fees now you have to have something in place like right like a rights contract right where you're <laughs> probably getting a, a banana and a coke from espn but they were able to triple that um, right yeah that can be a game changer i mean i always come from the perspective i want to see you guys all be able to make livings as just as a fan as friends of everybody like it, to be a professional paintball player, you should be able to just somehow make. It doesn't necessarily have to be from a salary, you know, because there's different sports and endorsement models. But yeah, those are the things as a, as a sport you have to be comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And, and, I think yeah. I think that you know it doesn't need to be fabricated, like say a WWF or whatever WWE situation, but it does need to be coaxed out in the right way. So. You need to sit down with someone or go up and get an off-the-cuff interview and try to get that raw reaction. I mean, that's basically, you know, I was out there shooting. I didn't play the last tournament because I was out there picking up color for this movie, and I feel like I have to grab it. <laughs> Fucking guy, <laughs> man. Stop it. Listen, uh, you know, going up going up to Tom Guest right after he lost a one-on-one to, to lose the tournament, and I was like, hey, man, how do you feel? You feel like you let your team down? 100%. You know? Yeah. Like, that's that's dude, definitely, I'm, I'm we need that, that shit. My camera. That's but, incredibly I mean, important. You know, yeah, but, um, you know... That's it, why it, I stopped it, it, playing it, it, fucking it's, paintball, it's, Alex, is to, to be, do that shit. It has to be the willingness of the talent to be, like, forthcoming and honest about that stuff, right? And, yeah, Ryan, if you're not getting paid, why would you contribute if you don't want to? Um, so you've got to get the right people that will, and then you go in and you say, hey... That wasn't hey, what uh, I said. You, you just don't have to go turn in, my words around. You don't have to go in and point the camera at Ryan and say, hey, Ryan, say that, um, say that Kyle's a prick. You know, like, you don't have to do that. You, you just have to... We have to be, and, and right now is a weird time because I feel like paintball has really changed from like really gritty and confrontational to very 
very professional. On That's the a field. fucking problem. That's a well, problem. Yeah, I, I, I know. For what I we're know. talking about, Dan's yeah, laughing because yeah. he knows that that's a problem. Yeah, that's I a know. problem. I, I, agree, I agree with you, but I'm just pointing. I'm pointing out that that change happened and it happened somewhat <clears> naturally, right? Like, there's no. It's not like the Iron Man, the guy, or the aftershock that all lived in Chicago, playing Iron Man from Southern California. Everyone lives in geographically different places, and they actually meet up and they they hate each other. Right or the All Americans in aftershock, right? And they it still hate each other. It doesn't change so, the like, equation. Antagonism drives attention. There either is antagonism naturally, which is where the sport came from, or you have to do the WWE shit or the Drive to Survive. Drive to Survive is literally lying to the public and creating bullshit drama where it doesn't exist to elicit an emotional reaction out of the consumer right. to drive numbers. And, and, and everyone's and fucking leave. signing on and doing it because it's making them drillionaires. You know, I would be in favor, Matty, yeah, of the, like league, the league manipulating things to be able to create those narratives, right? So, like, for example, Kyle and Dalton and whoever, whatever, went to, you know, the new team. The very first team of the... the, the AC, AC Dazzle. The very first game of the tournament. <laughs> listen, the very first game of the tournament should be Dynasty against Dazzle, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's what it should be. Yeah. I'm and so should, down. We should, we should play it. Yeah, up. yeah. We should interview it before the game. Okay. It's a real game. It's part of the tournament. But there was help in creating the narrative. Okay, but thank you. I love that you're saying that because I've been trying to get this done for as long as I can remember. Because we're what we have to do is there's an event happening. And we have to create a show around an event happening. We don't get to mess with or fuck with anything that's happening out there and create extra bullshit. We can't manipulate the schedule or I can't go be like, hey, I, hey, dude, Kyle, some crazy shit went down behind the scenes. I need you to fake an argument with this dude over here. You yell at Ryan real quick. Like, that's not because do we want to? This is a question. This is a legit question. I'm not saying we should or should not do this. But if you want this and you're not willing to do this, then I'm sorry. Then you're not going to achieve the goal that you would like. That's what we're dealing with here. Because, again, paintball's spectacle. No one's dying. No one's leaving on a, on a stretcher. There's no fights. It's as safe as it possibly could be. It's as muted and tame as it possibly could be. It's timid as fuck. That's not how we came up playing this game. Playing a fucking war game. And here we are, and everyone's like, I love you, dog. I love you. Hey, mad respect, bro. Mad respect. Hey, can I have the, Can I tell the story? Nah, dude. It's I can't. We can't have this conversation you know, in public. That, that's where we're at. So the best things that are happening... No one gets to hear about, and then we can't because we have to have split deck and all this ridiculous bullshit that happens. Like it, again, you know, like what are we doing here? Uh, you know, this is where well, that's why like we, hash- we have this. way we have this. It's the hashtag expansion. grow paintball thing. Okay, we well, guess what? I've been want. trying to grow fucking paintball for as long as I could speak intelligently. You know, that's where this is where we're at right now. Let's do something about it. You know, like, and this is why I do like the one-on-one thing. That's and, and honestly, and I'm not shitting at all in any way, shape, or form. Like. When I talk to Tom about this sort of stuff, or I talk to, you know, the the leader, the powers that be, or the people at companies, like, or even players, you know, I, I mean, like, people get it, but we have to take that next step. You know, it's like the players have to be able to willing to like. It's called having a, a private moment in public. You know, the very first acting class I ever said the secret to acting is you're having a private moment in public. You are having this emotional reaction because we are emotional robots, and this is how, you know, millions and millions and, and billions of dollars sometimes for tickets are sold. This is how it works. So either we are going to do these things that we need to do. Two and two is four. The sky is blue. Water is wet. So if you want to intrigue the human mind, you have to do certain things. If we're not willing to do that, we're having a different conversation for the game of paintball in general. In your opinion, what do you think the answer is to having a paintball paintball show or broadcast or whatever it is that has longevity? Right, that's what we're looking yeah, for. Talk about, talk about you talk about the fucking beanbag tossing and whatever. Yeah, that's great. It's on TV, but it do, this doesn't have longevity. It it just doesn't. So all right, um, it's auto cockers, no face yeah, masks, no, and look, a loud fighting, Dan, bro. Like, that's what, what I'm saying. Elements, what are the elements of that of that show, right? Because Kyle's kind of interesting, but I have a point, right? He doesn't care about the car racing, really. He likes the dynamic of the show where it's like this guy versus that guy. This guy's getting cut. This guy's coming in. Like, and, and it has a lot to do though. with the money, though, too, because everybody... No, it does it. It has everything to do with... You want to talk about driving episodics? There's a couple things that go into that answer. You want to talk about driving episodic television mm-hmm. is... And it's funny because it, it just, like, takes a sword. And I'm, I'm sorry, but it just takes a sword. I'm sure Maddie's about to jump out of his seat for what I'm about to say because he probably knows where I'm going. And it just takes it. all of that... All of the like technical that we could have or don't have, and just fucking slays it. It's driven by fucking story. Yeah. You come for spectacle, you stay for story. 
Like that is what um, I wish I had. If I had the the total magic answer, um, but there, you know, uh, um, I, I would I would put it in place so that PayPal had that. But Alex, I think it's really good and really important you articulated longevity, and I think that more people need to think about that. And the league and everybody needs to think about that when the opportunities come up, because once again, we'll make the so look um, WWE just sold for nine billion with a b again laugh as much as you want as those dudes are all going to the bank they just sold for nine billion dollars uh to endeavor they have a two billion ish deal for their friday night show which is on fox which delivers 52 weeks of un um of live entertainment that's a, that's a steal. But, and I'm going back to the longevity thing, Alex. The reason they're able to do that is prior to that, they have a 30-some-odd-year history with Universal USA Network of on Monday nights. So it's Monday nights. It's this time. You tune in. There's this kind of – and you, you can take that, of course, to your traditional sports as well, Monday Night Football, yada, yada. So that's really important. What's an opportunity that's going to keep you there? And I don't know on some levels if – there's some liability or um, one of the things holding paintball is how many episodes can you get out of five pro tournaments, right? From a network executive. And I think that's another thing. I just, no, go ahead, please. I'm sorry, dude. He's asking how many get a lot. That's what I said. I I think, I think you can get a lot, right? Because what? You can't get, no, you can't get enough, dude. I mean, for for a whole year. So, but, but wait, what, what would you consider when an episode? I mean, I mean, TV episodes are 22 20, 24 or minutes. So what's what's one what's minutes. one match, and how many matches are in a day and a weekend and a? Well, it know. depends on what again, you know. This is, what is, what's the what is, what is the episode? You know, what what narrative so, are so we here, chasing? Matt, uh, here, guys, and and this is something that like goes into the current format, and I know Maddie agrees with me, but the 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 scheduling is the issue. Is this is the split deck thing? And, and and you because here's what maddie loves and we all agree with this there needs to be a narrative you need to be able to create heroes you need to create villains you need to create something and you cannot do that within 45 seconds and then talk about a whole other team what they need to do is they need to put all of the i'm not going to call it lousy but all of the bottom 10 teams need to play on the semi-pro field champs and challengers no they just need to play on the semi-pro they're in the same bracket if dynasty is playing latin saints that's on the pro main field because people want to watch dynasty if latin saints are playing nrg elite Get the hell out of here. You guys get the top five, ten teams play on the pro field for all of their matches, and then everybody who plays against them plays there, Ryan, and you do you do it. You do a, that, though, you do a, a like... one minute or a minute and a half, 90 second turnaround, so it creates a bigger roster, more if players on the roster. I like a big roster. I, I do like that. that. doesn't, if you're talking about, so I'm talking about a post-production show. Yeah. Okay, so, talking right. about, and you still can't get five out, but dude, if you're talking about live, don't forget, once the event's over, no one gives a shit. Right. Okay. So, so I'm talking about, and then, okay. So, so with the yeah, other one, you could do a post, you could do that post production though too, Dan, because that'll stretch the amount of time out for that match that will get you a 15 minute match will be right at that 24 minute mark, and you will have time in those 90 seconds to put in any excerpt clips, commercials, anything that you want in that break time, or cut it down to allow for a 24 minute program and if you do building your you, that's you do 52 working the assumption matches, that a 24 minute game is compelling 10, 10 to an audience in a long time i mean dude sometimes how, how often how, how many way. baseball games are, are compelling to an dude, audience I'm a, I'm a player and Zero. i'm intimately involved in it and it's not compelling no, to me wait a second yeah but like, it's not it's not compelling i i feel and, and i think that you could you could dial it in with a with a field layout you could you could practice a field layout to make sure that it's exciting and just play that field layout a little bit more often. No, yeah, but, but I think you're right. Yeah. It's, 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 you, you, you build, no, but you, you can tell, 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 you can you can tell, 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 you can you can tell, you can tell, you can tell, you can tell, you can you didn't stay too long because it was boring as hell, yeah. but you, you recognize some of the names, you recognize some of the characters. You're not going to stick around for six hours, but Skinny Kevin does, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he yeah. watched Drive to Survive, and now he watches all the races. It so, also like, help. Don't there's forget, there's, there's, there's rights fees being paid from Netflix to, so Formula One doesn't pay for that. Formula One did put that on TV, gang. 
that is a right steal. There's a partnership let me, there. But let me, Art, sorry, uh, Dan, I don't mean to interrupt. I would like you to no. finish your thought, but I just want to put this into the part of the equation in your discussion is that if you, since you're, you would be one of the guys that if I had to do this, I would, you know, consult you, um, you know, you, the Darrens, the Pats of the world. Quote me what you think Drive to Survive costs to produce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've read pieces, um, so I know from second hand, I believe, I bet Darren knows exactly how much. I think it's a million and a half an episode. There we go. A million and a half an episode. I mean, we've already talked about it. I think that, yeah, that, that right there. We're um, having it. We're just, the... what are we talking about? You know, it's like, so, who's got the million and a half? One thing though that, now, you don't need that though. You don't need that to tell the story. You don't need all that production value to tell the story. You don't. It's not coming. I know also, that. Right. I, I'm sorry. I know that, Alex, but it fucking helps. You know, it's, it's like not, people are pissed, like, I want. He was so pissed at what I said. He called me Ryan. No, I, well, because it doesn't make any fucking sense, bro. Like, it's the same shit. Dude, like, why would you like, say because? No, no, like, because, that, like you're affirming it's like, what he's saying. saying. No, because people like, are like, oh, we want, that don't make you know, sense. Dan, you'll like, appreciate like, this, like, but it's like, oh, we want Red Bull type marketing. We want this. We want that. We want, you know, we want it to be like, we want paintball to have like a drive to survive. I'm like, all right, cool. You want to write me a million dollar check? Oh, you can't write me a million dollar check? Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? You know, it's like we can't. The, yes, you can Paypal tell. You need... guys are telling creative stories. We've been telling amazing, compelling stories that people still just did a podcast yesterday. And people are like, dude, oh, my God, it was so amazing what happened with Heroes for a Day and Push and Sunday Drivers. Yeah, they didn't cost a million dollars. You can have an effect and an affect in the world without spending a shit ton of money. But we can't sit here as an entire sport and say, like, why aren't we doing what... Uh, Formula One is doing. Why aren't we as popular as the NFL? It's just a ridiculous conversation. I'm not saying you guys are saying that, but like I hear this sometimes and it's just a ridiculous conversation. It's like, guys, we have to circle the wagons. We're, we are shooting guns at each other. This is not for everybody, okay? We need to do the best we possibly can with what we have. We need to have our stars be more vocal and more willing to share things that have to have those private moments in public if they do hashtag want to grow paintball. We have to highlight those things and build that dramatic base so people give a shit about what we're trying to watch. When the live thing's happening, we try to continue continually like we have utilized technology to try to capture a very confusing game more conducively and more productively and continue to do that. And now, we have to me, continue to do that as long as we can. Minute, uh, so a couple of things that are important to remember, but I think I, this will Sorry, tie in this will appreciate you. Okay, <laughs> one, that million and a half dollars doesn't come, it's, it's, it's a budget. It's not coming from right Formula One. So, it's, so in one hand, nobody's asking, quote unquote. And if 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 you put PayPal into that, they're not asking because it's not a time buy. Like the second thing is like, you do kind of need a million and a half. Like here's and here's why those things those things do matter. It on some of those levels when you get in production and you start to understand what some of those budgets are. One of those things that those budgets buy you is a lot of competent people. That move that show's made by an army. And so you don't miss Ryan throwing the air down or being pissed at Oliver. Like there I mean that it's it's a huge crew that that does that. So there are some things like I don't think the budget is as like meaningful just because you're not like that's what that type of television costs. You're not asking paintball, you're not trying to do the ultimate fighter which is ultimately the exception that proves the rule. Cause like, there's pretty much no other time by that's really worked that well ever. That was a great um, time by. That was an excellent time. by. Um, so, Save you know, I think, I think that's okay. I think your point about longevity though, Alex is really, really important. I think another thing that is an opportunity for paintball, I was bringing up when I was bringing up WWE's breakdown and, some of that that stuff and then all actually all other sports the reason they're getting these right fees is they're bring, they're bringing a fan base with them like that actually goes back out to what you were talking about is cultivating this like building you know building this nice you, you know thing that can be like leveraged um and then the other point i wanted to make sure about what for kyle that what is important is in that rights fees thing so kyle's still helping in that process because there's rights rights fees between netflix and formula one and so netflix wants to make sure people are watching so there's still an advantage to have a fan like kyle who's like okay i love the show i'm gonna watch this 
I did go check out the Formula One race. Boy, you know, I don't know if I'm really going to watch very many of these. Like, it becomes this, this ecosystem. Like, Max, Matt, you said something at the top about, you know, it's not like 2005 anymore where, you know, TV is this kind of top pinnacle. It's like you have to have this and, like, you be at the chart and, like, that's the, the, the end-all be-all that, that saves all this stuff. It's kind of more of this formula. And if you could have an opportunity that had longevity, like you were saying, Alex, that would be, like, consistency. You had some kind of, of uh, production that made sense. Um, one thing that's always um, vacant from these conversations, it seems like, is what the network wants. We're all in this our echo chamber, right? Know, that's what a good we point. Think will work. I wanted to bring that I, I up too, as well, because that's part of it. Because it could, like, if you look at the way the paintball has changed, all of these changes that we are currently, you know, living in the backwash of, are changes that were made from the top down, not that people specifically wanted to change from a player or team perspective. It wasn't the high watermark for us competitively. It was we. It was done because we were all. Everyone was chasing the dream. And again, we still live in the repercussions of that. You know, so it's like anytime we go, you know, if we do broker a deal, where then then that what does the network want? Because they're gonna be like, well, we want you guys to do this or do that or like you can't call them guns anymore. Whatever that whatever it may be. You know, it's it's just yeah, it's just something that building, has to be in the conversation. You're building a product around what we what one thinks they want, right? Like for for all I know, right? And then some of this of course depends what network you're on. Somebody with an opportunity is like, oh no, that thing you love, Dan, with the Nikki Cuba flag and sticking it in people's faces, like that's offensive. Like we don't know. We don't <laughs> want a show like that. We want a show that does this. And like, okay, well, I don't, I don't know that. That's, you know, that, that's my perspective. So that's an interesting thing also too, is that like, there's all this talk about making this thing for this person, uh, quote unquote, but we're never actually asking like, cause you know, I, I mean, I, I know some distributors, but I don't, you know, I don't hang out, hang out with, uh, the head of Netflix or, of, uh, you know, HBO Max, Tom, Tom might, I don't, everybody knows Tom Cole, but dude, I don't have those kinds of, of comments, but I, I do think that that's important. And then you have to, you know, again, think about like, Hey, is this the, the, a good opportunity for this? And like, again, I don't mean to keep going back to it, but I think it's so important. Like Alex's thing about longevity, I would take something that I think could still be there in five years. I mean, you guys actually all, both Kyle and Ryan, you guys brought that up earlier too, about like, well, what happened to the shows that we that we did like that were here? You know, I would take something that has a longer chance of a partnership and a commitment and that may be there in five or seven years um, versus like a one-time, dude, you know, if Cornhole or Pickleball is not going to be featured on ESPN in 10 years. It's just not. It's, it's the flavor of the day. It's incredibly easy to produce. I mean, it's like comparing apples to snow tires when you yeah. compare, like... Same with uh, uh, Cornhole, because people are like, cornhole. Cornhole's on TV. I'm like, that's like There's a... There's only one show with a potential of longevity in paintball. Spick and span. Yeah, you're watching it, dude. <laughs> yeah. well, you I said think, something positive. I, think, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I know. A paintball should be called playing paintball to survive. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. That, that's what the Spickens, we should that's rename the Spickens fan show. Yeah. <laughs> We're going through a rebranding. Playing Paintball to Survive. You hear it here, folks. Uh, <laughs> playing Paintball to Survive is the new name of the show. Sur- survival, survival Ball? Is that that's yeah, what it should be yeah, called? Yeah. Pillow fighting. There's all sorts of stuff. It's funny. Playing Paintball yeah. to Survive. But, no, I, but Dan, I've got that. You know, people, Inflation. You hear these knee-jerk reactions. People are like, if Pickleball's on TV... Uh, and 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 cornhole's on TV, and I like why I just can't believe that paintball's not on TV. I'm like, okay, um, that's like a really if you are a network exec to film pickleball or to film cornhole, that's a really really easy show to produce. And the amount of talent you need, like, dude, I could take you could take all of AC Diesel and Dynasty. That's all you need. That's what twenty four ish dudes or some whatever, and you know, and th- and that's twelve teams. Like, you're not talking about twenty teams with seven to ten foot folks or, or maybe even 12 i don't know what everybody kind of rosters up these days yeah it's just it's so different man I, I also, think you're right. you, either, you either drastically change which i don't think is the answer i think the answer is maddie we do what you're doing and you're doing a great job and you just keep plugging ahead improving a little bit every year like you're doing and and then you know you'll probably have some uh a successor, you know, you'll be old <laughs> so, you know, we and, actually do it anymore, yeah. and, and that guy will take all the glory. <laughs> Tight. 
Perfect. Well, and you know, it's it's not to say like, look, don't don't think a good OTT subscription number isn't something that is potentially impressive to a network executive either. Like that starts to tell them, oh, okay, yeah, and I just had that over ten years. The one thing that I think is very like, this is, it goes back to this. I, I feel like an emergence of a new golden era of content producers because again, as we've discussed. This is not psychology, it's biology. The human brain is a storytelling machine. It consumes and produces stories. Stories we tell ourselves about our lives or consuming other people's stories, whether they be real or not. The one thing about paintball is it is real. The, the things that people, if you're watching this and the things that you see with these guys out here, like the, this is these are things that are really happening. We haven't turned it into the WWE. This is authentic. And so... The more of that, the better, and that's kind of why I'm pretty excited about where things are going. Because you know, it's like we're having these you know vivid conversations about things, but um, I'm, I'm I am kind of happy with where we kind of are. You know, I mean, obviously, I seek a better day as everybody does. You're right over there, dude. <laughs> but he got Christ. stuck in that thing. <laughs> he says he's resting his foot on the trash can. <laughs> and his trash foot got, got stuck, stuck in, in the trash can. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it's it just it's. It is very impressive to go to an event and hear a bunch of people that are very, very, very animated and passionate about storytelling. And so I think, and there are a lot of cool, you know, we've, again, we, you know, Dynasty's been on this big run. What makes that run that's so fascinating is that, you know, I think unarguably it's never been as competitive as it's been. Um, you could argue in the past couple years, okay, maybe is 2023 as competitive as 2022? Maybe not. We'll see how things go in the next two events. But there's just a lot of people that are down for the rigors of storytelling that understand the importance of that. And and as you see that, you know, with the demographic shift of paintball itself, like, yeah, it is trending older, but we are starting to see people get their kids into it. The people that are still around there have come back, have money. You know, like it's 10 men is thriving. Big games are thriving. Anyone I know that owns a paintball field or a store that's well run, not like some ramshackle bullshit, but like that things are going pretty well. Um, so I think we have to keep that in mind as well too. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's definitely, a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff and a lot of, a lot of ideas and concepts and, and, and I think we're relatively on the same page. We need a lot more money and then we can get a lot more, uh, a lot more people to, uh, open up. I think that would, uh, is one thing that we want. Yeah. Hey, Bob. Being able to, and I know it's hard. There's so many people, different companies and whatnot, but but and it's it's cool. I appreciate you guys talking about it. And answering paintball, being able to answer the question comfortably that, and and it might even be from a different content perspective that hey, what gets on TV? If that's not exactly what we do, mm -hmm. that's okay. Like I'll, I'll I'll give you one example, and I'll ask you, and then I'll and I'll also ask a question, like. Uh, again, this is an old example, but if you go back to like the explosion of X Games, by the time the X Games hit, nobody skated Vert. Nobody. Right. Like it was over. Like Vert died for the most part at the end of the 80s as it's economic, yada, yada. Street skating comes up, you don't need anything. And obviously, X Games has evolved. They've got great street courses, yada, yada. But what, what started to get on the map was this kind of spectacle that was not necessarily what like obviously all those dudes were respected but like mm -hmm. you know your street skaters that's that's not how most people skated um so then my question to you guys is um if somebody wanted to come in and do like a legitimate place came in and wanted to do a documentary on the wnxl what would paintball's reaction be as a sport because that's something new that's not the tried and true like there's a lot of debate but if you just go out into the television world um i don't have an opinion on that uh, question yeah yeah i, I mean please i was just gonna say i mean female stories are um you know there's more openness to female stories female sports stories people uh, stories people of color how would paypal react to that kyle please i don't you know i don't know uh I, i'm not sure how they would react. That's the, that was your 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 big answer. 
Well, no, I said I don't. I don't have it. Uh, I, I, don't think, I, I got this one, guys. No, I, got I didn't this one. say that. I said I don't have an answer to oh, that. Oh, I, I said I, I don't. I, I said next, next question. <laughs> no, you said you said you said I have taken. I'm gonna take it. I don't have an answer. I said I don't have an answer. I got something to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Give me the rock, Dan. No, no. I, I'm sorry, dude. I feel bad yeah. now, Kyle. No, no, it's right. You know what I'd say? You know what I'd say to that? I'd be stoked. I really would. Good for you. Yeah, and hey, look, I, I, I that already that, happened that, with the college. I think that, like, our, or, our world, uh, as, wait, what are we talking about as, right now? I as it. professional well, paintball players, is back stable and sustainable. <laughs> I'm talking about sponsors. You guys need a right. Korok sponsor. And, and, back here. and I'm happy with that. Like, I think that's who <laughs> we are. And, 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 if it's, and if somebody's going to come in from outside and, you know, dump money in here or there, I don't really care. I think that that's great for the, the whole ecosystem. So... Yeah, I mean, if there's a compelling story in there and they feel like they can paint the picture better inside the WNXL than they can in the NXL, then, you know, have at it. Yeah, and I, I think that they did. I mean, that heroin Zoc was really good. And, and Dan, to actually answer your question from uh, like, yeah, I mean, from a, you're kind of, I think, pulling on, do, if it's not us, then are you going to be okay with that? And and I, mean, I think, and this, okay. it, this I mean, was. It, and I don't mean you personally, Ryan. Really good. Just, what I've what I've heard, and dude, I don't, you know, I'm I'm back around, but I'm not fully in it. Like I heard, there's been some some fan backlash to the WNXL. I don't know the level. It's just my my point. What I asked why you stepped out, Maddie, is how would paintball feel if Netflix came in? It came in, you know, some bit, and what they said was like, we want to do a docu series on that because that's in vogue with the storytelling we're doing right now. Because that goes to that general question of is paintball okay with something going to television to, and Alex answered that, you know, raise the, the, the tide rises all boats type of thing. Mm -hmm. That isn't exactly what you guys do. I made the example of vert skating, putting the X games on um, X games, uh, uh, putting vert skating on the skating on the map when nobody skated vert anymore. And so I asked like, how would paintball react to that? Well, it's interesting that you said that, um, and I think this is something we haven't discussed, is that when you look at the where skateboarding went when it went to vert and how that was as a spectacle very entertaining, but no one could do that. Or no one or people were scared. That's not how people skated. Yeah, that's not how people skated that because one in order to skate vert, okay, well what do you need? You need a half pipe or you need access to an empty pool. Almost every single person that skated when that happened didn't have access to that. And I felt like we had a little bit of, we still have some of that with paintball because, you know, still to this day, man, after doing all the stuff I've done, talking about paintball, all the documentaries we've done and all the work and on water we have under the, under the bridge, when I do discuss things with people and I will try to explain like, oh, there's this pro team dynasty, they're on this run and the paintball's played on these inflatable fields. Like I will get a more visceral reaction from somebody when I tell them like a, a story about taking a tank down at Decay Nations during a big game, then I will trying to describe how dominant Dynasty is right now and this amazing three pack run through that Ryan Greenspan had to win the you know the MVP or something like it's there is a bit of a disconnect between what the Mavens, the niche hardcore audience of paintball, all the people watching right now, what we want to see and what the world still thinks is as paintball that has not come up in this right, conversation. The, the, the long, you didn't directly answer the key question. There. Like, I think, I think you're right. He's like, saying about a, WNXL. A, doc, a documentary about about D Day or Decay of Nations, or you go there and you interview all, like all the colorful people that are there, and that will be a one time, way more interesting thing to watch. But there's I, no longevity. But I no. Uh, again, but the, but this there's no magic bullet here, right? There's no one specific thing that's going to happen that's going to you know hashtag be the thing that grows paintball or that saves the game. It's multiple efforts across multiple different platforms continuously for a length of time, because we are doing something that is very difficult for most people to wrap their heads around. Um, and I'm sorry he uh, brought up that I didn't answer the question about the WNXL. Like, again, as a pure paintball fan, I really don't give a shit what it is that gets the zeitgeist. I mean, if it's if it happens to be the WNXL or the Veteran Militia or whatever it may be, you know, that 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 people that the that the mainstream populace seems to find fascinating. 
as a lifer, then if that brings more eyes on paintball, then that will make me happy, you know? So I think that's an encouraging perspective because from a network or whatever, an outside TV perspective, you can have, there's a broad, there's a broad uh, palette of solutions or options, or if they think, whereas if it was just purely the concept of like, we have to take exactly what is happening on go sports and televise that. What do you think? That's the only thing that that paintball would be happy with. Well, unless, unless, like you're saying, Dan, somebody comes in and like a, a TV network or somebody says, comes in and says, this is what we want. If it, barring that, my summation of the situation is the game doesn't need saving. We just need to keep doing what we're doing. And making it a little better every year and keep going and having fun and creating things that we think would be cool and interesting, not because we think it's how to grow the sport. Absolutely. It's because we want to see that happen. Like I, I you know, the, the films we're making right now are films I want to see, right? Like that's, God, that's, dude. that's why we're doing it. You know, it's, it's not always... like, it's not like, and, and you know, big, big props to anyone out there who's, you know, supported our business because, you know, that's what's driving this. You know, if you bought a headband or you've helped buy something at the tournament or whatever, you know, we're trying to roll our vision into something that is cool that we're going to create for everyone to enjoy. So, um, you know, on top of that, you know, thank you, Maddie. Thank you for people that care. Thank you, Tom Cole. Thank you, Bart, for dumping his money into this. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you to Matt Engels and Darren and the guys that are behind the scenes. They're creating this and they're doing it because they care, because I, I assure you, they could probably be making more money somewhere else. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, obviously you, Dan, you care. That's why you're in there right now, you know, with bloody fingers trying to fuck edit the, the movie. So, um, you know, I, to I, be here doing it. yeah, so, so that's, that's what we need to focus on is we need to focus on the people that care and empower them to do the things that they want to do other than Ryan. Yeah, of course. There it is. <laughs> Waiting for something there. It's kind of like music, dude. I was just listening. um, Chris Demacus, who is the guitarist and singer from Lesson Jake's, got a podcast, and he just had on John Feldman, who's an Uber music producer and in the band Goldfinger. It's Ice and Tony Hawk. So they were talking about like Chris's podcast is about breaking down a song, and it always works this way. Like Goldfinger's song Superman is, you know, blew up. Of course, it's most known for the Tony Hawk Pro Skater game. Dave fucking wrote that in 45 minutes like that was not purposefully orchestrated to like hmm, you know what like how do we have this longevity of a kind let's bring in this it doesn't yeah i know there's parts of pop music that work like that but that song which has resonated resonated and bought houses for people right um was a pure representation of what somebody felt and wanted to make in that moment Right. And that's all they were trying to do. But it was like write a kick ass song. Yeah, and, and to play devil's advocate slightly, you know, there is a formula that we still use, you guys use, the two of you, Maddie, everybody uses a formula to like you said, there from back from the square one we were talking about, there is a formula that does work. And that formula has is is tr- has bought people houses as well on how to showcase pretty much any anything, to how to grab people's attention keep their attention yeah. and want them it's, it's math. wanting want want them to the art stay there and, and wait yes. the art is in how you say it but it is math on there, how I mean, you there's a couple there are a couple things you know right but but there's a lot of failures in that formula i mean you're not, no, you're totally. not well you're but not the, you could tweak it you could tweak it and and there are opportunities is, uh is anybody gonna watch slap fight next season I, I can't stand that shit. Oh, that no, shit just drives yeah, me it's crazy, fucking dude. Canceled. Oh, yeah. I hate it. Because the formula didn't work. Well, yeah. Yeah, and that's like, that could be paintball, right? Like, get it on there and then, and then that's but that, it. But that's my warning, right? Is like, be careful what we wish for because what we yeah. have right now is sustainable. And that's the biggest question because the people always are asking me, like, oh, paintball on TV and Huntington Beach was so cool and all these, a lot of things that, that were cool that don't exist. And they don't exist because. A rich person took a bunch of money and they lit it on fire. And it was a really cool, bright, shining light for a little bit. And we got to absorb that and be like, wow, what a beautiful funeral pyre that is of all that person's money. And that was really fun and I'm glad I was there. But it's not sustainable. I would love to see Paintball have an attitude of, like, very selfish. Meaning, like, yeah, like, and it's a transactional relationship. 
get that network money and build your house more, your quote unquote PayPal house more, right? Like, don't look at it to, to save you. Look at it as to like, great, like we're going to get this, you know, uh, thing from network, whatever. How do we build better infrastructure in our own OTT? How do we like help uh, our our you know pro players make livings like yada yada like that like really think about that kind of like perspective instead of always kind of like you said earlier ryan i think chasing the holy grail of 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 television it's like how can you use television Mm -hmm. to in a way that also benefits them because it's a transactional relationship that helps you guys that helps paypal do more of what it wants to do yes it's it's a it's a tightrope Hey, Kyle. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you like Wendy's? Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> hey, Dan, do you, wh- when was the last time you played paintball? Oh, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> you love it when these nuts are in your face? <laughs> I think I played a vicious street ball one year. Like, I mean, so it's probably, I mean, it's probably 13 years. Uh, oh, I mean, shit. Yeah, dude, before that, it's been even probably longer than that since I actually played. Damn. And it's going back to when I was at Warp Sports and Him around. And so, yeah, that's been a long, that's been a long time. Dude, that's wild. That's wild. Uh, what do you, are you guys, what are you guys planning on doing for the screening for the, when you drop the Iron Kids dock? Dude, let's let's just let's just take it one step at a time, pal. We're Come just, on, we're just getting into it now. No promises. Don't tell anyone when it's coming out. Well, no, I was tying these things in. Could you we're do like a big right. game day and then put up one of those big inflatable? Dude, Alex and I had a great time at the t- uh, what I'm remember last year at the Decay Nations. Remember we were balling out, having a great time. Look, yeah, this is what great. I'm thinking, yeah, right? Because this is why this I asked this question. Imagine you know those big inflatable like we go see at the park, like the the, the big airball bunker, but basically screens where they put a projector out and the big speakers you can watch like imagine doing a paintball field and then dan can play some paintball right yeah, bring out dude. all of our stuff you make a big event out of it <laughs> look at alex <laughs> alex i heard you've been doing some beekeeping yeah <laughs> I, th- I think you can expect that we'll want to screen it tied to a tournament or at a or a field where we will want it to be a place where paintball players will want will be around and will want to do stuff and, and at this point we probably should make a whole lot more yeah Let, let's listen, we'll just leave leave the leave the um doing something cool up to the cool the cool people <laughs> um okay great well uh we'll take it from uh, here then now <laughs> i will say this ryan i played with the maple leaf chiefs at the w or the icpl last weekend shout out to the chiefs and, and matt Engel, <laughs> that was a lot of fun uh, but dude i was a disaster bro i got shot bro. every time i shot my own guy in the so listen the that's what happens I'm when you're trying to get color at like, events listen, bro, i'm so sorry about that it's not gonna happen again the very next point i did it again it is disastrous bro you just it, i should just be you need to put me out to pasture yeah that's um, basically what <laughs> was happening that's why we gave you the camera <laughs> Baby. that's why we gave you the camera to to, to get some color <laughs> yeah but i won just bro capture the light. yeah just capturing some color i won uh-huh. what'd you say congratulations is what you're supposed to say for shooting your own teammate in the back? No, we won though. We won the tournament. What? You won the WNXL? Oh, uh, so can what I ask you, you the question say? of what happened with the air thing? Like, I didn't really even get a chance to talk about that. Is, what that are you not some to say, shit? Bro? Is this some shit we don't? You're want the to one talk who about? said it. No, we'll t- we'll you tell you. The about. WNXL, right? No, you said WNXL. You literally no, said that. PPL. I see these nuts. The <laughs> 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 By the way, hey, I got these uh, dope ass Iron Kids uh, homie goggle straps here. You can give away uh, a handful of these, right? Okay, cool. We'll have to give them away because no one will buy them because they're not tournament legal. <laughs> How are they not what tournament legal? Like Yellow. Oh. Huh? Nothing. It's not big games, bro. It's not big games, than a dude. You can wear that when you go play red. Ain't not tournament legal. It's for practice. That dude. looks it's like cool. Infamous's practice. jersey color. Listen, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let just because it's illegal in a tournament ruin the color yellow for paintball. <laughs> there it is. The logo's yellow and it's gonna be yellow. I love it. I think you could get away with it if Oliver could flip his goggles shit. up in the event. Like jury duty. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> where? Get out, oh, fool. That That's thing, what you get, dude. Throw that thing in the. Never mind. I'm not gonna say yeah, it. don't say it. Yeah, you know, it. now it's 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 actually been recorded <laughs> that he received it. I did not say that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah you, that's true. You yeah. just show, showed proof that you received it. You didn't have to do that. 
Mm. Now you have to go. Yeah, you have to go. Well, once they once they see I'm, re- I'm how I'm, racist uh, you are affiliated with you, Ryan, they're not going to accept me as a girl. Yeah. No, hey, hey, after hey, they guy, see who you really are, you mean Alex? The guy on the Pick and Span show, you know him. So Alex, you're obviously I would want you on on a, a jury if I was ever in a horrible situation where I need someone on jury. You should go to jury duty. We need people of your wisdom going to jury duty. You should do that. That's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe I will go. Yeah. That's how society works better. Yeah, yeah that's true. Unfortunately, they're going to hear one of his jokes about that's falafels, and then they're going to be like, well, we can't have this guy here. Go. Yeah. You need somebody you should now live some up. life, yeah. and that's kind of how it works, because yeah, God I forbid that... if you were, like, let's just say something bad happened, and you were not guilty, and you're being unjustly accused, and then now a jury of your peers, and do you want a bunch of people that want to get out of jury duty as the person deciding your fate? Yeah. Or do you sure. want That's Alex Frazier there? Show, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I hope I hope you have to park way far away and you have to you literally have to step in human feces when you're walking down the and street. And your car gets towed. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're gonna get your car's gonna get broken. Marin County, bro, not San Francisco. I don't know how bad that I don't know how bad these trash shows have been, but I feel like there's a lot of antagonism here. This is gonna be like Marin County. It's like you own too many horses. Yeah, Marin County. You own too many horses. Your ranch is too big. Yeah. Your zoning is not right. We don't allow we don't allow fire pits anymore, so you have to go straight to jail. Yeah. Straight to fire pit, yeah, straight cool. to jail. Your yeah. wine cellar is too no big. No binding yeah. sticker, straight you to jail. You have a permit for that wine cellar? Yeah. Yeah. Is, there, is there any chance that you end up on the jury for Crandall's property situation? Straight to yeah, jail. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't know if ju- I don't know if they're doing jury selection for that one yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your bees have been <laughs> pooping on my like roof. On straight to jail. Yeah. Dude, Ryan. Yeah. Guess how much a Taylor Swift ticket is in the absolute nosebleed. Oh, they're like twenty five hundred bucks. Twenty eight hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah, That's it's right. cheaper. Right it's cheaper to fly. It's cheaper to fly to Argentina and buy a Taylor Swift ticket for a, an event there than uh, than get one in the U.S. Dude, I want to go. How in the hell did we devolve to talking about Taylor Swift concerts? That's, that's how this is how this is how the Spanish show goes. This is how it works. Yeah, yeah, this is how this is how it works. Shit about Taylor Swift, bro. What are you talking about? She changes the eco- economies of nations. Alex. That's great. People Good for are her. Going in so power. Shit about that's like, real for her. Thing. We, uh, we have that discussion. Yeah. I mean, how is she not going into the bathroom? We should see if we could get her to do the interviews at the games. Yeah. Do you think if you're gonna go, so how much is the paintball player? How much is the backstage pass that you bought? I almost yeah, dated Ariana Grande, actually. Mm-hmm. That's a cool story. Yeah. Ariana Grande. You almost dated Ariana Grande? Yeah. You know, the funny story, when I lived in Florida. This is a real story? Yeah. Real story. When I lived in Florida, I was working at Hollister at the time. I was 17. I met her in Hollister. I didn't know it was her. Well, she wasn't big at the time. I got We exchanged numbers. We were going to hang out. And this was my space at the time. You spit game to Ariana Grande. She said, I'm going away for three weeks to audition for Nickelodeon. And I was like, I don't got three weeks to <laughs> If you were 17, how old was she? Like 16? I don't know, 15? I'm 17? They were both underage. Yeah. It's yeah, okay. stop it, Al. Yeah. Jesus, oh, Alex. Alex. The Marin County 32. is showing He's anywhere. Googling it right now, dude. Look at it, this guy. <laughs> this guy's just trying to okay, see. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so, yeah, Alex. I, I'm like talking to her and she's like, I'm going away to do an audition for Nickelodeon. I'll be back in three weeks. So I was like, I'm not waiting three weeks. Like, and so I never messaged her again. And then like three years, I see what happened. And I was like, oh, that was a big mistake. <laughs> I should have probably, <laughs> probably, probably, probably reached out after hours. those three weeks. I don't got three weeks to call you. you know what? Chick. It, just, it happens that way sometimes. That is a giant bummer. Yeah. But maybe if she, Log back I'm in your sure MySpace. she probably watches the Speak and Span show. So Most then, likely. Then oh, she's going to draw sure. the, she's going to draw the connection. That was sure. you at the hall. Yeah. It's probably on a, it's probably on a Craigslist miscommun, uh, oh, shit. missed, uh, yeah. missed uh, opportunity. Oh, connection. Misconnection. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. All right, Dan. I'm sorry, I'm sorry well, Kyle. That's that a bummer, was, bro. That's a bummer. I don't regret many things in life, but that's I would I would regret that, too, if I was you. I would definitely regret that. That was a giant L that you took there. That yeah. Dan, uh, there was there was one good question, or not question, but it was, a, 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 I guess it was a question. Someone was asking if there's a way that you guys, it, how do they can watch uh, the old Jawbreakers, and can you put them online? Oh, can you Can you get those things online, or what's going on? Eric, Edric. I would that's actually like to watch those too because I, I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have a DVD player. I know, Brad. Dude, it's so Brad and I have talked about that, and we've been we've been talking. Um, so the obstacle with um, I'll, I'll throw this out. It'll be interesting to see what response you get because Brad and I were talking. So the obstacle that we have with the Jawbreakers um, is all of the music. Yeah. Because it's 
life and taking it to the internet is a format that just i mean it didn't exist so you don't have the rights plus all the 10 years are expired what we what brad and i were kicking around is the possibility of like remastering them um and making sure there's like some cool stuff with it and like doing maybe like a little kickstarter like just enough to cover whatever those licenses would be and then figuring out a way to get it out like to the public through that it's it's not very uh, oh that'd be cool get asked that i i I don't know i'd be interested to see what people maybe think about that yeah i mean we we have a there there are a lot of people that i'm I'm sure would be stoked on that one definitely i I would say it's for sure worth looking into uh you know obviously finding time to do that but yeah looking into that figure out how much you need to raise and, and then talk about uh getting in there and we want to do it legit like uh, like the famous book just in the way of like we just like try to make like it like really special was like I mean kind of like what Alex was, was saying a, a while back about just just trying to make stuff that we would want to have like like I even know you, right you're talking about Marats so like I bought a um, I think it's Arrow is this really cool um, DVD Blu-ray company and they do like repackage they do like badass packaging on stuff like I don't even have a Blu-ray player anymore but I bought the Mall Rats re-release of it because it comes with all this silly shit. Like, um, it actually the liner notes pull out, and you can open up like the schematics that are in the film. And Silent <laughs> Bob's like, I'm gonna like swoop down on the forge. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we really going with a bag of chocolate covered pretzels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we, if we do something with it, we'd want to make sure that it's like, you know, it's something, it's something that's kind of awesome, something we'd like to have, and people, people would like. Yeah, to a little keepsake. So, Right now, it's it's not available, and that's why. Music rights. Bummer. Um, but I don't know. I feel good. I mean, without divulging any details, um, I have a pretty hot hand right now in the scoring licensing uh, process, <laughs> so maybe this is a good time to ask. Uh, this is it. I'm getting a lot of yeses from folks. I would love to see got, that. That would be Dan, rad. Dan got some good ones, man. Yeah, that's... That if was... you guys are interested in using any Ariana Grande songs, I could try to reach out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got, <laughs> He's got an in. If you want to send them, Please reach out. We just talked about this. This is what we need. We need you to start <laughs> yeah. dating Ariana Yes, you're right, talking right. to me you anymore. You literally right, jumpstart right, PayPal. Right. It's, it's like, you know, he's already, he's got a kid. It's already, it's, 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 yeah. it, I think they have an He's old. That. His ship is sailed. Dating. Yeah, but you're ta- still young enough. Taylor, you can Swift, make it happen. Taylor Swift is still, you know, she's just, she's still in the mix. She's single? I'm, you know. not. She's not really my type. It would be, uh... It, that that would still be impressive enough. There was a, there was enough. I think I think Justin or Victoria was the show that she was on. I don't know. My daughter grew up on Ariana Grande stuff when she was on Nickelodeon, so that would still be impressive enough. Where I'd be like, hey, yeah, Sophia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, like, Watch uh, paintball. Ariana Grande to use her music. We're just trying to we're just trying to grow uh, uh, paintball. Taylor, Taylor Taylor Swift is over six feet, by the way. <laughs> well, she's what? She's over six feet tall. Tall girls love me. Yeah, <laughs> Al. I'm not a huge that's fan, a but right? just maybe thing. that's yeah, why because go. it seems like I'm playing hard to get because I'm not really. There. Yeah, and uh, it has just come to our attention that T Swizzle is recently single. So <laughs> he yes. must be playing Ooh. hard to get. He's way down there. You got this, dog. <laughs> hey, you got this. You're charming. You can do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, babe, I'm just trying to grow Tall paintball. Girls love you, bro. Yeah. Just trying to grow paintball. Yeah, <laughs> and grow. <laughs> 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 and grow in general. All right. Let's see. Well, cool, Dan. That was awesome. I appreciate that. We're, uh, I yeah, think yeah, everybody's if you stoked. Want to, this go cool. check out, first watch the American Gladiators, um, uh, doc, you see, uh, doc on, uh, 30 for 30, and then go check out Dan's podcast. It's called, um, what's it called? Uh, it's called, it's called uh, I interview other documentary directors, and we just kind of talk shop. Uh, oh, nice. I've been able to get some pretty cool, um, uh, pretty solid guests. So uh, doing it kind of in a limited series is for now probably like monthly, but I'd like I'd like to add, um, and I got some bonus episodes from like uh, I did it in a previous incarnation. I, I had to rebrand just because in the time I was gone, there's now like 30 shows with the same name. Um, but I talked to the guy who directed the Jake Burton doc. Um, I talked to Billy Corbin, who's fucking awesome. He did Cocaine Cowboys and oh um, yeah, I love that. Q thirty for thirties on on the U on Miami. 
Hey, tell uh, us. The, sorry, Dan. Will you tell us the title of the thing again? Sorry, there was a there's a yeah. No worries. Uh, audio it's called handheld, handheld with Dan Napoli, like handheld camera. Great name. Um, and yeah, actually, just came out today. Uh, dude that did American Gladiators, and actually, I have to give all the credit. Like that goes to Matt. Um, Maddie sent me that trailer. Um, and I was like, right as I was redoing the show, and I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna try to talk to this guy. Uh, and Ben was super cool, and we can watch both shows. and got an interview booked like a week later. So thanks, Maddie. Dude, all good. I just want to give a big shout out to you and Alex, and I would like you to send me some recs. You do sometimes. You send me some recs. Keep the people in your life that send you awesome recs close, because Jesus Christ, man, I've like got so many cool things, Dan, that you sent me over the years, and Alex that you sent me over the years, and. You know, we'll exchange different things sometimes. I was just it's about like, to bring up our... Um, I our, still have your our, email yeah. from like six years ago, that, or maybe well, longer. You could, like, you could text me Rex at some point in time. I'm yeah, just saying right. that, yes, like just you yeah. never know what sort of cool thing you're can, 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 going to consume mm -hmm. when your boy, boys send you some cool shit. Yeah, yeah. reason number right. 971, why, why men don't stuff. live as long as women. This is a great There's recommendation. A tree right jumping, yeah. yeah this exactly. guy jumps out of a jumps. In that's trees. a meme, dog. That's totally. And different. actually, you're still yeah, Dan Thunder that, right now. Can that's, you just let him go? That's a that's that is important <laughs> though, because you saw that happen in Rambo: First Blood, number one, when he was running away from the the police when they were trying to wrongfully accuse it could him be of a doing way something. You can live in and a, you have like to jump. A stressful, like apocalyptic situation. Thank you. Situation. I think you about it every time I want to ski lift. Meme you see in a bunch of music circles that that says to the effect of like. People who show you new music are important, and I think you can probably extrapolate that to just be that, like, people who sh show you, you know, new cool things, books, m music, movies are, like, important to have mm -hmm. around. Yeah, that's right. And thanks for having me on, dude. This was super fun. It's, it's, uh, it's awesome to see you guys. Dude, we'll, we'll for sure have you on again uh, as we're, you know, getting closer to wrapping up this, uh, this monumentous project that you're doing as well. And, uh, yeah, I put your, I put your socials in there and also copied and, and put in your um, handheld with Dan Napoli. How about a couple of wrecks? Give us a couple of wrecks off the top. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I'm not stoked on this, actually. What do you, yeah, what are you watching out. right now, Dan? So, I was going to say, definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a book, Matt, I'm sure you've already crushed through it, but um, Rick Rubin's got a book on creativity mm. uh, that is definitely worth checking out. He's a genius. Um, that's very good. Um, Rex, um, obviously it started the bear. Um, I'm trying to think what else is some stuff that I have been checking out. Um, music, like, ah, this isn't really too obscure, but, um, if you're not listening to Turnstile, you definitely should be, um, and, and, and checking them out. Um. Can you write that yeah. down for me, please? Which one was that one? Turnstile. Train of thought. Tur turn no, Ryan, you won't like it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a movie? Matt, you should lay some lay some stuff on. Um, I've some actually uh, so after um, years of write, uh, reading historical nonfiction, I'm going to be doing a non uh, a historical storytelling podcast. Uh, so I've just been, and my first subject's going to be the Battle of Midway. So I've read. A ridiculous amount uh, about the Battle of Midway, um, so that's kind of been my sole focus for months now. Uh, I was reading hundreds and hundreds of pages about um, really interesting stories about the most pivotal naval battle ever fought in the history of planet Earth. So, like, that's what I've been kind of giving my spare time to. For We've sure. got another three hours before the sun goes down. Do you want to just kick it off right now? It's all started. <laughs> it all started These guys, nobody's doing anything, right? June, we got no plans. Four. <laughs> Ryan's June gonna 4th, coerce you into spending your good, great content on this big and span show. Yeah. Just slushing it down the toilet through it. So. <laughs> um, oh man. Nice man. All right. Also, uh, I mean, it's an old wreck, but like, if you if, if people are listening and have and they like docs, if you haven't seen Momentum Generation, like, mm -hmm. go watch that, dude. Um, it's it's really really good. Also, you brought up the Jake Burton thing. I mean, that's a tearjerker, but it's done masterfully. Oh yeah. Um, it's called Dear Writer. It's on HBO Max. Yeah, that's that's a super solid, um, super solid piece. And that director, dude, did not. I got two stories from that show. She was not a fucking snowboarder. Um, he was doing some rescue. He's done some rescue edit work for Red Bull. When he met Jake, as they as they left, what Fernando said to him was, "Bro, if we do this, we'll have fun together." <clears throat> 
and Jake picked him. And then the second story, and I think I told Alex this on the phone the other night, Red Bull uh, Brain Farm is sending him music discs and discs like, okay, pick stuff that you like. And he's like, hey, man, there's this one song that has, uh, like, it's kind of like a all, it's like a church chorus, but, like, I feel like it's all dudes with beards, like, singing together. And it's, it's what's this, it's bro him? Is that, would that be okay to put here? Which is, if you know, is a Pennywise song yeah. that's been in like five million snowboard. Yeah, and yeah. so the Brave Farm dudes were just laughing. They're like, yeah, we, we know what that is, man. Yeah, are you, he's like, oh, has that been used that's before? Tricky. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, that's, uh, the, like, oh, yeah, most cliche. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, late 90s yeah. Yeah. punk song. Yeah. But it also massively fit. That was the section in the film. And when it came on, everybody I know was like watching with was like stoked that it came on. Um, but yeah, that was... Um, that was a really, really good talk. Sweet. What else, boys? <laughs> yeah, what else? What do we got? What do we got? You got? Yeah. Well, you got any recs for us, Alex? You're also a consumer. Actually, awesome I got a shit. question for you, Dan. How do you get like into your into your like most creative space? And and this might be good advice for for a lot of people out there too. Like what? What are some things that you do maybe, I don't know, even in like that single day or like weeks leading up if you want to like get the creative juices flowing? Like what, what puts you in that space for you to make what you Dude. think is almost perfection in your eyes? That's an awesome question, Kyle. I don't know if anybody's ever like asked, straight asked That's me that. Really good that. Well, because I've been like starting to create a lot. Great bro. I wrote this yeah. while I was flying home That's today. That's you got him around sometime. I know. Virginia. I wait. Up. You guys, I collect, I listen, yeah. and I Maybe don't, someone I would let him talk, Alex. No, I let you guys talk because I have more years later to, to talk You do, more. yeah. yeah. Well, yes. We're all so going to die before I take you, it in. I take it in. But no, I was thinking about this earlier today, and I... And I thought about that because I, I do a little bit like with our brand too of creative work and I know like what I like to get into. So I'm just interested as someone such as yourself, one of the goats, I'd like to know like kind of how, how you find that space. Well, I appreciate you saying that, man. Um, so a couple of things. I mean, for me, music, um, the other thing that I found and like a lot of folks I'm listening to or, or in, in you know podcasts or self betterment or, or mentioning this kind of stuff, but it really that, that matters. Um, I can't overvalue the concept of boredom. Letting yourself be, go quiet and get away from what you're working on. I think one thing as a young creative, you like are I just have to keep grinding on this and like you start making things worse even though you don't have like as I'm older like I like to step away and I think like my best inspiration comes from when I'm not my mind's on something else I'm trying to do um you know like dude I watched I got super inspired I actually had to stop um the American Gladiators doc like 25 minutes into it and run and go do something on the Iron Kids doc because it just mm, inspired yeah. and got my brain going. But that's not why I watched that. I watched that because I wanted to and maybe by that point I knew I was going to talk to Ben. So I wasn't in the mode of like, oh, it's like I sort of have to be creative. Um, and, and then focus. And that's another reason why some of these docs take so long. Um, there's some of it that is very like uh, like the grunny grime work. You're syncing things together that like it's not highly creative. Um, but when you get super creative, like the ability to just focus, give yourself like this is the only thing I'm gonna do today. And then you know that becomes you know a little bit difficult on a doc. It's 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 not like you know there's non-creative work like on a, on corporate work. I can do three or four different jobs and projects in a day, and you can, they can move in little pieces, and you can go in and out of it. When I'm trying to do something like deeply creative, I have to have this like deep focus and that's kind of, that's kind of all I'm doing. So that's the place I go. It's, it's almost, I mean, I think we talk about it on the podcast with Ben for docs. There's almost this weird, I, I mean, it's almost in a way like being a fighter. There's almost like a deep, dark place that you have to go to, sure. to just let, yourself get immersed in what you're doing and, and sometimes it's difficult to create that space in your life to be able to get into that zone but that is where I'm probably the happiest where I have nothing uh, 
ahead of me except runway of like, hey, I have like 22 days of editing and I know where I'm going. Like that's where I'm super happy. Um, but yeah, a little boredom, distracting my mind and then just, you know, consuming great art and creative or things that I think are great art or creative from other people that again are not what I'm trying to I'm you know I'm putting on Nirvana never mind because I just want to hear something great I'm not looking for songs to use because that's not going to be in our budget but it's going <laughs> to inspire me to like to, to go do something so I don't know that's just kind of a couple things for me I, li- I like it it's funny too because I was just uh this last week I had watched uh, the Yellow Submarine the Beatles have you mm. seen it I haven't seen it yet. It's, it's great but um the song uh, "Nowhere Man." I like did some more research into it about John Lennon writing it, and I this came up that he was like thinking for hours for the whole day to, for this this song on the album, um, and it was like not till he just like he was like all right I give up and he lay down in the bed and it came to him like right away the whole song uh, he wrote it and then he said in this uh, Playboy interview that um, writing music was like being possessed like a psychic or medium almost like you're saying too that dark place. Um, and it has to go down or else it won't let you sleep. You have to get up right as it like hits you and then you, you have to create it. You have to put it down. That, that's such a fascinating thing when it comes to creative process. Everyone's creative process is different. There used to be this poet, I can't, her name is escaping me, but um, it was in the early 1900s and she lived on in the Midwest and she said that poems would come to her like like a thunderstorm rolling over the hills and then she would have to like run back to the house to grab a pen before the moment left her and able to to write it down so everyone has their own creative process when it comes to summoning that you know um or to get past resistance the war of art i would suggest that to anyone out there if anyone's out there struggling trying to live their you know authentic life as people say these days read the war of art by stephen pressfield um, another, uh, you, gave, one, you gave me that book, dude. It's an amazing book. I, I think about that still to this day. I fight against resistance every day, you know, cause I have to create things that people listen to and, and it has to be elite. So you have to fight resistance all the time, you know? Um, man, I love that quote about the Hills, man, because I, this, you know what I think is really underrated in creativity is fucking momentum, man. Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah, like motion creates emotion and, and you doing something actually will help stop that resistance thing. I'm going to try to actually, this might be a good way to, but I want to pull up the last. Is ever you guys are familiar with the last page of you the War of Art? Have you no, read the War I'm of not, Art? I'm not. I'm going to, this is, I can find this real quick and to read the last page of the War of Art. It's so good. Um, can I drop another rec while you're looking yeah, for that? Yeah, yeah. So, so Kyle... Um, you might really appreciate this. Like some people will find this a hard watch, but if you are really interested in creativity, not that you want to replicate it, but um, just because of what you were just talking about, no, nowhere, man. The Beatles doc that came out on Disney Plus is fucking fascinating, man, because it's very minimal editing. It's really a chance to be a fly on the wall in the creative process and sometimes it's what quote unquote watching paint dry it's not the most like you know bombastic dynamic thing but it's really fascinating watching you know three geniuses and a really really talented person in Ringo Starr Ringo Starr's probably biggest fault is that he was in a band with three of the greatest fucking musicians ever so he's always got to play the sidekick but like there's some really fascinating stuff just watching how they get to their process you know i yeah it's and and i I talked about that i think earlier on 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 the show maybe you know several months back and that i was watching and i was like man this is boring and then i stuck with it and and eventually i was like you know what like these guys had 10 15 20 thousand hours before they got to this point they're already masters and look what's happening now this is how they're creating their music everyone brings something that they've already worked on individually and it's the dynamic of a team um working together and what it takes to be successful right and it's not pretty and it's not fun and it's not exciting it's hard work and um and i I feel like yeah of course that, that that's the creative process but also i couldn't help but relate that to the dynamic of a paintball team too with the the managing of people well, or Dynasty, because which I was going to say that just came in full circle without us even yeah. trying about you yeah. four, about you four. 
Yeah, so so like you've got and you've got like this situation in there, a really fascinating moment where Yoko Ono is all up in the business. Like it's the four Beatles and then Yoko Ono sitting there reading a newspaper while John Lennon is like playing Give Me Some Truth for the first time and she's like not even looking up. Like she's like scrolling through her newspaper and Paul McCartney's in there like, you know, bringing them like amazing work and she's like uninterested. You know, and George Harrison's finally like, I've fucking had enough. And Paul's got to <laughs> calm him down and be like, listen, John, like, has never had a girlfriend. Like, his mother left him. Like, he needs this to be, like, help, like, and, and like, talk talk George off the cliff. And What's like, so great about that scene, Alex, is the, um, the general narrative in the public eye is you would expect it to be the opposite, those characters to be behaving opposite. Right? right, you would just by the concept. There's always this thing about a Lennon McCartney rivalry, yada yada. You would expect it to be the other way. Paul's freaking out that the other guy and like George is the calming yada yada. And like that's not what the reality was at that moment. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, it's, it is. It is. I mean, it's it's whatever nine hours or whatever it is. But it, it's, uh, <laughs> and also knowing that that was the last time they ever played together. Yeah. And it's a, it's a series though, right? I'm yeah. trying to remember that. Three episodes, yeah. See, they're, okay. they're bringing them back. AI is bringing them back. It's already been, they already recorded yeah, they a new song. And they can produce a, they, a they already recruited a brand yeah, new song. Can, like, recorded a brand create, new song. Yeah, it's tight. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, my, I'm selling my... Uh, did you find your quote, Maddie? I quote? did, I got it. This is going to be a nice so- sound, uh, so- uh, sign off here. Should I bring the mic really close to you and you can just kind of like, we can leave everybody? Don't really touch the mic. because No, it goes back on. you want to do. <laughs> or maybe you get close to it. You tell, it's your, your show. Levels. You tell me. Where would you like me? Where would you like me know. to record this? this I, uh, I feel like this, this is it. Piece. This is, this is going to be the send off right here. This is going to be... Uh, um, this well, be before nice. we send off, also, Jonathan Heights, A Righteous Mind, everyone should wa- uh, read that because that will help you understand the world and what it's happening these days. But, yeah, so this is the last page of uh, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. So if you are struggling with creating anything, a business, a piece of, uh, of art or literature or music, whatever it may be, a podcast, this is one of the best things I ever read as somebody that's had to create things for the world to consume. Um, and this is his last statement on this, like, you know, literally iconic, one of the best things ever written. I mean, this guy's been on Rogan's podcast. You can go check that out too. (laughs) (laughs) Suck it, Alex. That's actually what it says. Yeah. Actually to start this, uh, this one, this one thing, it says, Hey, Alex, you little bitch. Um, so yeah, this is, so the last, the last chapter is called the artist's life. Are you a born writer? Were you put on earth to be a painter, a scientist, an apostle of peace? In the end, the question can only be answered by action. You do it or don't do it. It may help to think of it this way. If you are meant to cure cancer or write a symphony or crack cold fusion and you don't do it, you not only hurt yourself or even destroy yourself, you hurt your children, you hurt me, you hurt the planet. You shame the angels who watch over you and you spite the Almighty who created you and only you with your unique gifts for the sole purpose of nudging the human race one millimeter further along its path to God. Creative work is not a selfish act or a bid for attention on the part of the, of the, of the actor. It is a gift to the world and every being in it. So don't cheat us of your contribution. Give us what you got. That's nice. And that's how the Spick and Span show was born. Dude. Great show, guys. You just gotta, you yeah. gotta, you gotta, yeah, just, you gotta, you, gotta, you just gotta fun, plug guys. away, man. Plug away. Thanks, Maddie. That was beautiful. That was, epic. That was great. Yeah, that was awesome. My pleasure, gentlemen. My pleasure. And uh, like that, we thank everybody for one of the best shows that we've had that was to date. Pretty fucking epic show. Thanks, Burb. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue part two uh, next week, probably on Wednesday because it's the Fourth of July. But thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Kyle. Thank it's you, fun everybody. To while you guys were thanks for having me. Thanks for too much detail. Thanks that everybody can... else <laughs> that's in this studio, the flies, the mosquitoes, and everybody else that helps to keep the lights on. Gen X Global. Thank you, Dan. Matrix Thank you, Gear. Alex. Ah, you shouldn't have thanked him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. We love what you do, Dan. Thank you. And that is no bullshit. But Alex is, awesome. but Alex is, uh, thank you. <laughs> but Alex is barely worth a, worth a win. Yeah, I get back to work. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs>